Oh, I had the volume on. <laughs> oh, you guys can all hear me. All right, how's the, how's the volume? Can you hear everything? Does it sound stupid? You hear sounds good. All right, great, thank you. Yeah, dude, this is a hap stream, hap only. Uh, I had a non-hap week, so I need some, I need some keyboards. All right, let's, all right, let's kick it off. Hey, everybody, who's watching? Eight people. Oh my god, I'm famous. Um, how do? I see, oh, users in chat. Oh, hey, there's people, all right, cool. All right, welcome everybody. Um, oh, I left an essential tool out of my little setup here. So anyone who was uh, watching me last time, uh, I was in an office last time. The office is a mess right now. So I, uh, I also have to turn myself off on my monitor because I'm driving myself crazy. I don't know how to do that. Oh well. Um, so I was uh, in this office. My office was a real mess. So I just took everything and moved into the kitchen. <laughs> I'm in the kitchen. Um, so we're doing a kitchen build stream tonight. And uh, I left my keycap puller in the office. So I have to go get it. So I'll be right back. <laughs> Wish a Snapchat filter could be used on Twitch. What, uh, I mean, yeah, that would be, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> Just give myself the dog face. That'd be, that's what we all need. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do today, this is, this is a JD45 that I got off Mech Market. Someone put a bunch of stickers in the back of it. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's a keyboard, you know, it's a slab. Uh, I'm going to build it. So right now it's not, I mean, it's not soldered together. I just put the switches in it. These are, uh, Securios from, uh, the, the group I, they're Helios, but pink, they have lighter springs. Um, I actually, so, okay. I'll express my frustrations after I say what we're doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the switches, keycaps off, take the switches out, open them up, put in Cat Wee Wee 62 gram springs instead of the stock springs. It's the same weight, but I don't like these springs. And uh, we're going to lube them with Store Uni GPL 104. So we don't have the weird separating grease. This should be good. Lube up the springs. We're not going to do any brush business. I'm just going to shake everything up in a tub and um, maybe we'll solder it together. Sound good? Let me see. How do I... My whole streaming setup is... Shaking your head. What are you shaking your head about? Is it a Hawaiian shirt? Um, my friend described it as a stew pickle shirt. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. I've... I got it at the thrift store. <laughs> it's comfortable. Don't judge me. Um, so yeah, all right. So let's get let's get to it. I got to take off some keycaps. Um, I do have some music on in the background. If it's really annoying, I'll uh, I'll turn it off. But I I don't know if you guys can hear it at all on stream. So how was everybody's week? Any interesting, uh, anything's happened, any pick, pickups, purchases, mail deliveries. I know I actually did not get anything 
Try not to buy stuff. I say as I buy stuff, like all the time. I'm actually probably gonna sell this keyboard after I build it. If somebody wants a JD45, uh, let me know. It's a good keyboard, it just um, isn't really what I want. There's a couple of details that I just aren't perfect for me. I think are appealing to a lot of people. I know, oh man. Yeah, all right, so the JD45, which I guess is a pretty old keyboard at this point. In case anyone watching doesn't know what it is, it's a, a 45%, I guess. I don't know if it was like the first one to have that designation. So it's like a it's like a 40%, but it has one extra column. Oh my God, yeah, all right. <laughs> you know, I don't know, I have to look at, all right, here we go. I'm looking at the wrong thing. I'm looking at the Twitch window, so I don't know what I'm looking at. So yeah, so this is JD40. JD45. Um, it's a tray mount keyboard, but unlike the 60% tray mounts that you're probably used to, this has a fuck ton of mounting points. Um, so you can see there's, there's screws all over the place. Um, and so unlike your standard 60% tray mount, which has like a lot of, there's like, this is a super, super thin case, right? So your standard 60% tray mount has like a bunch of dead space and only six mounting points. This has mounting points all over the place and ridges that I'll show you in a second that are running down, uh, running down the whole length of the PCB. So it's a very uh, consistent feel, but it's also very, very stiff and rigid. Um, and there's, there's no give to it. I mean, obviously it doesn't flex. It's just a chunk of aluminum. Um, you know, it's not like the harshest bottom out ever, but it's up there. So it's just not necessarily what I want out of a keyboard right now. And also there's no mounting points for like cone feet. And so I would have to like double stick tape cone feet on there. So there's just these like little quirks that make me not like totally in love with this keyboard. But um, I don't know, I'll build it, I'll see how I feel. If I fall in love with it, I'll keep it. But otherwise I'll probably just sell it. Um, it'll, be a good, it'll be a good pickup for somebody for sure. Uh, so yeah. Uh, this this keyboard was run way before my time, um, but it's uh, it's a cool item. Now, yeah. So the first Chinese forty percent is after the minivan. Was it Chinese? Okay, I know. I saw the the Geek Hack, uh, group by. I thought it was JD Carpe. Maybe JD Carpe is Chinese. Um, maybe make sure I flash the board before I start desoldering it. It's Merlin. It's not soldered. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'll have to test it, obviously. Um, I, hopefully it's in QMK. I might not even solder here, because, like, I'm in the kitchen, and then I have to, like, bring my soldering stuff over here, and, like, so I might, I might even just, like, assemble it, and then, like, call it a day, <laughs> which is obviously not, uh, you know, the full build, but, uh, I have some other stuff to show on stream, too. I think there were some loose ends from the last stream that I wanted to tie up. Nice, it's in QMK. All right, yeah, I mean, I know the PCB works, or it worked like a year ago when I first desoldered it, so yeah, Merlin, don't worry, I'll check it. <laughs> uh, chances are it'll stop working in a week and I'll come on Discord all panicked. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just, I'll start taking these switches out, I guess, if there's any other questions. It's, I only have one monitor. I'm literally, I'm like on my laptop webcam here. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, like, it's sort of hard to like, navigate where everything is. And the one thing about this is that the PCB has relatively small mounting holes. These are Gateron made. It's less, these, these switch pins are less uh, fat than uh, like old Gaterons were, but they're still like a relatively tight fit. Um, and so this, like the plate grips tight and the PCB grips tight on the legs. And the first time I desoldered this board, it was like, really nerve-wracking because it also was like the most expensive keyboard I owned at the time and I thought I was going to just destroy the PCB. It's pretty scary.
It also had like round four zelias in it, which had really fat uh, PCB knot legs. Round four, round three, something like that. I don't know. Kind of surreal to buy something that uh, that's like so much. It's like older than you in the hobby, you know. It's like somebody somebody joined a group buy for this before I even knew what a group buy was. It's kind of cool to think about. It's like there's history here, you know. Someone picked out switches and like soldered it together. Like somebody like put put a Fugu sticker, and uh, I don't know I don't know what these other things are, but you can't probably can't see that. This is like a gray on black Fugu sticker. I didn't put that there, but it's cool. It's got character. So, uh, how many of you guys were watching the last stream? Who killed... Uh, how do you... Wait, who killed a PCB? TMO PCB. That's a that's like... Is that even open source? Can you even, like, get those made if you... Like, like if Thunderburger, like, disappears, will you ever be able to get a TMO? Is Nat the person in the, uh, they're like a moderator of like the 40% keyboards Discord? I think I've talked to them. Um, you know what else I don't have? It's a screwdriver. And if I can, no, that's a bad idea. Oh, this one already has films in it. Yeah, so I forgot, I'm gonna put, um, Switch films. I love switch films. I talk about them on Discord all the time. This one has pink ones. It's kind of a subtle look at my lighting so bad you can't even see. So yeah, I'm gonna put pink switch films in these guys too. I guess I'll keep this one. No, I'll just whatever. It doesn't matter that much for silent switches. Maybe I'll uh, do a little quick comparison here. Let me, let me shut that music off. Just in case you guys, it's in your way. Yeah. All right. Let's do some. Let's do some switch stuff. Let's see. So one of these. This one has a film in it. Oh yeah, so you actually you hear a difference right away. Let me put this in front of the mic. So, um, right, so this one does not have a switch film, and this one is a switch film. You know what else you're hearing? Is that spring, and that's that's why I uh, want to change these. But spring aside, even with a silent switch, um, it, it's like a cleaner, just a better sound. In terms of feel, like, all right, let me let me see if I can. Uh, blind my ears for a second. I'm tempted to say that maybe uh, is this space bar repair? 
No, no, no. I I just didn't take all the switches out. Um, this is a. I just put them in as a test fit, basically, to see if I liked it. Um, this is. I'm gonna build this. Um, so I was just comparing uh, switch with a film versus switch without a film, and sound wise, even with a silent switch. Interesting. So actually. Well, that's interesting. I'll talk about that in a second. Anyway, the point is the the silent switch, even with a even if it's silent, with a switch film, um, it's like a nicer sound, you know. It just and, and maybe in terms of feel, like you feel a little less rattle under your fingertips. It's not um, it's not like a super noticeable difference. If I was like, I don't know, if I had my ears totally like covered and I couldn't hear anything maybe I could tell you better but it's it's I don't know it's, it's so, much, so much of a feel thing like the wobble it's like it's like the same especially so all right so these these are weird um I haven't really messed with the Zelio silent linears all that much but so there's some weird properties about these I don't know if it's just these two that I have let me try another switch with like a different row key cat. Yeah, huh, okay, oh, that's really strange. So first of all, I, these springs, I'm sorry, Zeal, these springs suck. Like, listen, listen to this. You hear that? Like, this is like, like jewelry jangling on my wrist, like, that's not, I'm sorry, that's not a 90 cent switch. A 90 cent during group buy, meaning like over a dollar now or whatever it is. So that's not cool. Uh, but another weird property of these switches that I just discovered is that if you rock them back, like if you press forward on the front edge of the switch, let me, let me make sure you can see this. Um, yeah. So if you press like on the front edge of the switch, they're silent. You know they're nice. They're they're nice and dampened correctly. But if you press backwards, hear that? So it's, I, it's like it's like the the dampening material doesn't go far enough back, or there's like a, a nub in the housing or something. So somehow it's actually, the plastic is actually impacting the bottom of the housing before the dampening material does, and it's not dampened. Is that just these two switches though? Oh, weird. Put different caps on. That's a row four, this is a row two. If I put a row three cap on. Huh. So it looks like the only way to get enough torque on the key cap to do that is with a row three cherry profile key cap, or at least a, uh, what is this? Enjoy PBT, I think. Oh, what is this? This is KP Republic muted. Um, that's really weird. So I put a row three keycap on. I get just enough torque on the back edge to rock it back and then like miss the dampening. But with a row two, here, let me just make sure. With a row two keycap, this is the one that's really doing it. Let me see if I, yeah, I can't. I can't get quite the same amount of torque to get the slider over. I sort of can, but not really. It seems also inconsistent. So I tried, let me try this one with a row. Yeah, I can still do it, but less consistently. So first of all, it seems inconsistent, but also it has, to, I don't know, it has to do with the shape of the keycap somehow and, and just where you can get, what happens if I flip around a row four. Yeah, that should do it. Should do it really bad. Huh. It's actually not as bad. 
So there's some, all right, there's something weird is up with the, uh, the dampening material in these where they're not consistent and somehow some of them don't have full coverage. So let's, I, I'm really excited to open these up and see what's, what's wrong or not wrong. So this switch didn't seem to be doing it so much. And this switch with the film in it. Oh. Okay. Let's take the film out, see what happens. So this one was doing it really bad. Huh. No, uh, it just sounds grosser. This switch is defective, in my opinion. This one does not have complete coverage of the dampening material. And uh, it sounds and feels different from the other ones. What is wrong with this switch compared to a switch that doesn't seem to have this problem, or at least not as much? And I'm not looking at chat during these sections of me doing something because I only have so much room on my screen. Uh, and so I wanna see what I'm doing in real time. I don't wanna like, look at me three seconds ago, which is what I'm doing. I'm hearing me three seconds ago already, and that's throwing me for a loop. Thanks, Chewy. Hi. So, all right, uh, I don't know who just joined, who missed what. So I have discovered there is a weird inconsistency with Securios, and maybe likely with Helios and their brethren Roselios. Um, and I, I don't know, like maybe? This was the bad one. So you can't, there's no difference, um, but let me show you the good one. So the way these are set up, unlike uh, Gateron Silent, which is just, let's see if you can see. So you probably can't tell, but there is, um, there's a dampening pad at the top, but there's on the bottom, instead of like a single flat dampening pad, there's this like insert and it kind of wraps like around the bottom. And I guess it just gets more coverage, but actually compared to the, you know, the handful of Gatter on Silence I've done something with and compared to like Aliaz, Aliaz have their own problems. But Aliaz does not have this problem. I have never had a non-silent Aliaz, like a, where the, the dampening material doesn't have good coverage. And this one, I can't visu visually see where there's like lack of coverage. Maybe, maybe it's like ever so slightly, like you, you can't say whatever. Um, so, okay, so I guess, I guess these need to be picked over. That's annoying. Um, yeah, and you can feel it. it, it feels, by the way, they stick to, like, anyone who says, oh, gather on silence are bad because they stick, they stick to, so it's not, uh, you can hear it, right, this one? This one's higher pitch just because of where it is in the board, but it doesn't sound plasticky. And you can feel it too. Like this has a hard bottom out. These have soft bottom outs. And I, I don't like to rag on products. Like I don't, I, I'm usually of the opinion that like a product is good, um, you know, it, or it has its own merits or something, but for, you know, the 90 some odd cents you pay per switch. That's a little disappointing. I think I scared everyone away, huh? <laughs> There's only four viewers left. 
Uh, they just wanted to see me build a JD-45. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a little disappointing. Sorry, I guess I have to pick these over uh, if I really want to get a good build out of this, which I wasn't planning on doing. But uh, So I'll need to get my bag of these in order to... Can I feel in my hand? I hope I didn't swap the... Yeah, you can feel it. Uh, inside the suit. All right. So there's like a discard pile over here. This one's bad. Ah, I should have done this before I've taken them all out, huh? Not too bad. Am I gonna have to stick them all back in the plate? <sighs> Sometimes life is just hard, man. All right, let me put sliders. These springs are just, nobody wants those. Bottoms, tops. All right, I've got a bunch of plastic bowls over there. Um, all right, so game plan has changed. I guess I need to actually put them in the board and test them all out. That's super annoying. I think it's time to put some music back on. Um, and I don't know, engage banter mode because that's, that's going to be a super boring stream. Uh, give me, give me one second. I want to get my extra springs and I want to get my screwdriver, which I don't have my good screwdrivers here. I have to use my junk screwdrivers. Everybody come back, I'm doing something now. That's, <laughs> that's a hex. Ah. That's a hex, but. These screwdrivers are like, these bits are like very slightly magnetic. This was extremely frustrating to screw back together. So I definitely won't screw it back together on stream. Maybe I should leave it. At least while I'm testing these. Yeah, I'll leave it. Right. I didn't even get the other switches. Yeah. Good, you guys can hear it? It's like barely coming through in my headphones. I have a really poor sense of how anything sounds right now. This is, it's less precarious than the last setup where my phone was perched on a box and I was streaming with that. But uh, <laughs> it's still not, um, not what I would call a professional setup. It's literally my laptop screen just angled down and the laptop's like on the box. But I have my recorder, which I will flex a little bit. This thing is super cool. It sounds good. You have uh, uh, you got a lot of settings and stuff that came with these modules. It works. It records keyboards. It records my voice. It records the music, which I'm sure will get the stream uh, replay muted. But that's fine. Uh, see, it like <laughs> I have a magnetizer. I should probably grab. It like barely hangs on to the screw and just falls off. So that's precarious. Maybe I'll get the magnetizer. I'll show off the magnetizer. This was a man of interest recommendation. Hopefully it works.
I can do. I wonder. Oh wow. Oh, it's so much louder. And there's no more delay. All right, can you guys, is there a, I know there was probably an echo for a second. Can you guys hear me okay now still? I got a notification. Five achievements, cool. I've achieved something. So, I can hear myself without delay now. This is great. This is, what a, this is, this is good. Now this is a good setup. I feel comfortable now. So this, shout out to uh, Man of Interest, who recommended this thing at some point on stream, maybe it was on top class, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't even him. I'm pretty sure it was him. This seems like the kind of thing he would have. And what it is, I don't even know how it works or why it works, but it's made by Weeha, who I guess makes those driver kits that everybody likes. Which I should get myself one, because this is no good. It doesn't fit into deep screw wells, because it's so wide, of like fancy keyboards. So I have like fancy keyboards that are not fully screwed together, because I can't get the, I don't have a driver. Um, so this thing, if you, apparently, if you take a ferrous or, a, you know, magnetizable metal and you stick it in here and you rattle it around or something like that, it's supposed to make it more strongly magnetic. And if you want to remove a magnetic field, well, let's see if it worked. Here's the screw. Oh, yeah. Look at that. And it picks it up absolutely no problem. And it, you, I never would have been comfortable waving the driver with the screw around on it like this. So that actually worked right before our eyes. And then if you want to remove the magnetism, apparently you do the same thing in the demagnetizer. I don't know if there's like something with these steps that I'm supposed to be doing, but... So let's see now, does it pick anything up? It still picks it up, but not, but it's, it's, it's a little less grippy maybe? I don't know, there's probably a technique to demagnetizing. But I'm just going to magnetize the living heck out of this thing. Because I do, I, oh yeah. Oh, that's like, that's like glue now, that's amazing. All right, yeah, Weeha 401 magnetizer, demagnetizer brick thing. This was like, I don't know, 10 bucks on Amazon. Cool stuff. Nice. Oh, yeah, I don't even care about my other driver kit now. This is all I need. This is great. I got so excited, I'm not even supposed to be unscrewing this right now. I'm supposed to be testing switches with <laughs> These are all fine. Uh-oh. See, I unscrewed these things now. Oh, let's show it off. Yeah. I'll just screw one back in so it doesn't rattle. <laughs> See why this drive? <laughs> I need new drivers. I need my good drivers. This is some junk. This is serious junk. These bits are nice, actually. They seem relatively hard, but this collet system just doesn't work. I don't know why. It just doesn't, doesn't grip very tight. All right. So these all seem fine. I apologize, there's probably a lot of table noise whenever I um, tap on something. Let me see if I can put like a towel under this, this uh, recorder or something. softens things out a little bit and actually it should put it a little closer to my face you can probably hear my voice a little better yeah, I'll turn down the gain a touch all right can you guys hear me still okay sound good all right now let's do it yeah oh yeah okay table noise largely eliminated uh oh this one maybe i'll just maybe i'll screw this screw back in oh, thank you thank you man of interest oh, you you have no idea what, what good you've done in my life with this thing. Just right now. Today. Yep, there you go. There's your problem. 
but we'll do it with other switches. Alright, maybe it just does it with all of them. Alright, this is the problem with all the switches. Maybe I got lucky. No, they all do it. Alright, I'm not there. I'm not cherry picking them. They all do it. Alright. But these are all fine, like they don't they're not clicking. I still probably need to cherry pick them because I should probably do some of the corners so the plate has support. It's a pretty annoying task. I really don't want to cherry pick them like this. I don't know, maybe if I build, maybe I'll just build and like if there's any that are bad, I'll replace them out. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna do that. It's such a waste of everybody's time. Not always replace. I got a, uh, I got the ZD915 off Mac, uh, uh, Top Black Discord, Mech Market Channel. Thank you, whoever sold that to me. I don't remember your username right now. Um, here's the plate. It's your standard, uh, standard aluminum plate. 1.5 millimeter, not warped. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's not warped. Cool. Don't need that right now. Here is. I almost want to build this thing plateless. It's kind of hot. See the red PCB? This is the JD45. You can see for the block for the blocked corner version, you would uh, snap these off, these little corner pieces. Clever design. And let's put this mag newly magnetized screwdriver to work. Uh, dropped it in there, picked it right up. Beautiful. Oh man, this is heaven. Nothing like a good magnetic screwdriver and magnetic screws. Just the small things. Simple pleasures of keyboard building. see how many just the sheer number of screws I'll count them at the end uh, this is obviously like I said way more than your usual tray mount um, and I, I guess the theory is that it will provide even consistent pressure across the board like um, uh, I know that I know for example in real force uh, it's really important like if you don't you don't want to lose any of the screws I, I've been told this I've never actually done opened a real force or I've typed on it outside of a meetup um, but apparently it's really important to have like a good solid pressure between the uh, the, the plate and the bottom I guess to, to keep the dome sheet in place keep everything from rattling around and I guess that's the same theory here uh, like you're not going to get the PCB like you, you just get a really consistent feel across the whole board and in addition to all these screw mounting points very handsome looking PCB like cool routing there you go, 2015 Carpe Keyboards. That mega, good old 32U4. That, I think... This isn't a Wilbur PCB, is it? Some, there was some old PCB that I was like really surprised to learn was designed by Wilbur. It might have been this one. It has this logo. I don't know if that's a Wilbur thing. kind of looks like his Discord avatar. I don't know. So check this out. This is a very unusual train mount case. And I almost feel like if you're going to go train mount, this is the way to, like, go whole hog. You know, either you do four post or, like, go around the edge, like, or, like, the unicorn, or go whole hog. So you see these ribs. These will support the PCB. So there's no, like, like, like it doesn't matter where the screw mounting points are. You just want even, pre even distribution of pressure onto these ribs. And these ribs are doing just as much of a job holding it up as the standoffs. Um... It's a cool design. It's a really cool design. This little cutout. It's very low profile, very sleek. With a little uh, indent for the USB port. It's USB mini B. Um, again, there's a little hole, pinhole for the reset switch. Again, I'm disappointed in the lack holes for cone feet, but it's possible that in 2015, that was like still a gone specialty and they weren't like popular. I don't know. Maybe the keyboard historians out there can educate me on that. I'm just going to... Let's see. Oh, yeah. Check this out. Watch this. Watch this. Screwdriver. 
How many of these can you pick up? Oh, man. All right, I can pick up about half of them. Hope I didn't just lose one. I probably did. All right, it's not that magnetic. You can't pick up and pick them all up, but it can certainly pick up more than one handily, which is great. Let me just stick this back on top so I don't lose anybody. Oh, I wanted to count the screws. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven. Twelve mounting points. Literally double for a smaller keyboard than a 60%. There's twice as many mounting points. I would be really curious to see what a 60% what that is like. That's why I'm putting silent switches in here, because it's so rigid. Uh, so it'll uh, soften out the bottom mount and stuff. This is not pre-recorded, Bezo. This is this is live. This is the real deal. You're listening to. Um, you know what? I hope this doesn't get muted because we're supporting local radio right now. Uh, support your local radio stations, guys. Oh, I did lose a screw. This is uh, Jazz eighty eight WBGO uh, recording out of Newark. That's what you're hearing in the background. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what the TOS actually does. <laughs> if I get banned with my seven seven viewers. Whatever. I'll report. I can report. It's a button report slot rock lamp. Just report me after the stream if you feel uncomfortable with my theft of a free radio station. <laughs> um, I donate to them. It should be okay, right? Um, I wonder what the, I actually wonder what the rules are. Like, securiers were harder, firmer than gets. Yes. So I can get some gets on. So that is the one, um, one thing I will say they were, uh, yeah, there's no feet. No feet allowed, just copyright infringement. Um, no copyright infringement either. Uh, yeah, so the dampening material is definitely firmer, um, and there's definitely more of it. It's a, like this, this, I think this board will actually come out really nice. I was sort of like, oh yeah, it's like a board, whatever, and then it's fine, let's switch. But I think it's gonna come out really nice. Um, MX Silence are like kind of soft. Gateron Silence, I find, are about the same maybe. These are definitely firmer. That, that is as advertised. And they're also st stupid smooth. Like, you don't need to lube these to get a good feel. Like, if you're a new builder and you don't have any time or you don't have a good tool like this thing, which, by the way, I said last time this was the second best tool in keyboards. I lied. This is the best tool in keyboards. Well, I don't know. I'll go on that tangent later. Anyway, if, you know, if you're lazy or whatever, you don't have to lube these. I recommend swapping the springs, at which point you're opening it, at which point you might as well tub lube the damn things. Um, so that, like, they're not, I don't think these are off the shelf ready to go. I actually think Gateron inks, if you want an off the shelf switch, uh, I had struggles with them getting them like super perfect smooth, but if you're like a, like a noob, novice, I actually can't recommend these because the springs are gross. Uh, but Gateron inks are good. Uh, I don't even know where I was going with this. I was saying something about, oh, copyright infringement. I wonder, um, good off the shelf switcher creams. I personally disagree. You've heard my thoughts on those in uh, the old the old chat. Um, yeah, this is a demagnetizer. This uh, I keep switching to Twitch and then forgetting to switch back. So this is a Weha. I guess that's a, the, the model number four hundred ten magnetizer demagnetizer. I actually used it to successfully before our very eyes turn this super terrible like three dollar driver into something that can actually pick up screws well. And I was very pleased with it. This was, I believe, recommended to me by Man of Interests, um, who is a much more prolific content creator than I am. And he, I don't know, he knew he knew what the right tool for the job was. Um, we hot, tell that. <laughs> it's fancy. It's all like six bucks of it on Amazon or eight bucks, 10, whatever it was. Um, oh yeah, so I was wondering, I don't know if anyone knows, this is broadcast free right now, this radio station. So you, you go online, go to WBGO.org. You can listen to this radio station right now. So I wonder, am I, like, because all the artists license WBGO to distribute the music over the radio, I wonder if I'm, like, breaking some kind of, like, if I am technically making unauthorized copies of the music by, like, redistributing it over Twitch, or, like, because it's already, like, out there, anyone could listen to this at any time and, like, go back and listen to it, like... I don't know. I wonder about that. Thanks, Kinnick. Exactly. And if anything, I'm shilling them. I'm, I'm giving them free advertising. WBGO is an institution. It's a great station. It's been around for a long time. Uh, 
you know, public member supported WBGO.org, like 24 seven jazz fusion blues. Uh, even if you're not from the New York area, like just hit it up, man. It's a good, great radio station. Support local radio. Just clicking around like an idiot here. So, all right, so let's, uh, let's open up some switches, eh? I already have one done. Is there anything else I need to do? I don't have my films yet. I'll get the films. Oh, keyboard tools. Yeah, Visionary, you want to see this. So, this thing, I, I, I'm, I'm torn, okay? This is a sweet tool, too, but only if you have other bad tools. Get good drivers, you don't need this ostensibly. Maybe the magnetism wears out over time and you need it anyway. But, so, this thing is, like this end, uh, this end is whatever. It's like an inferior version of a wire puller. Like this is better because you can fit multiple caps in there at once. This you can really only fit one or maybe two like GMK keycaps in. But it has this end. And this is the business end. This is super cool. You guys probably have used those IC pullers. That It's like a it's like a like a like a pincer thing, and there's like green soft stuff. They, it's, I don't know what material they're made out of. It's just the shape isn't quite right, and they bend and they damage your switches. And it's this is just you can this is uh, you can just get like a nice tight grip. Let me show you. It's it's designed for this, right? This is like you get on KBD fans, you get on AliExpress, you get on Amazon. It's perfectly designed to clip into the clips. And you just squeeze that together. It gets bent up over time. You just bend it back. And you squeeze into the clips. And as long as you're careful, you know, you wiggle back and forth a little bit. You don't want to just yank it out because what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to, uh, especially on these soft clear housing, polycarbonate housings, you're going to bend up this front piece. So you don't want to just like yank on it. But this lets you get a nice, firm, solid grip on the bottom housing and from which you can wiggle, 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 and, and, and extract that way. Uh, I damage way fewer switches with this tool. It makes life so easy if you're gonna be unbuilding, rebuilding keyboards, using switch testers, etc. That's why I said it's the best tool in keyboards, because there's no good replacement. Like you can get, I don't know, you can get like two toothpicks and like work it. It's, it's just, there's no tool that does this job as well as this $7 contraption. Uh, so this one actually came with my Zhu K keyboard. That's how I first learned about them. It used to have a little decal that said CIY, which I guess stands for change it yourself. So this one says Team Wolf on it, uh, which is, I guess, the people that make the Zhu K, which I, I don't think I can recommend that thing in good faith anymore. I guess if you're going to get a GMMK, like just get a Zhu K, it's cheaper. But um, they also sell this on KBD fans. It's literally just called like switch puller like you, you just have to just like scroll through until you find it it's impossible to search for but maybe you can search for like ciy switch puller on amazon uh but just everyone needs one of these i don't know how people live without them i literally don't know what you would extract switches from a plate with, with if i didn't have this versus the key boss this is cool this is a sweet tool not everybody likes it i know uh jay was on top plaque you know he was saying he likes the, the the other switch opener it sits in the palm of your hand the nutcracker i uh, I like the sort of dexterity of like I open it and then like it's, I just like palm it and like do something with my fingers and then it's like right here it's it, it just fits in my little baby hands just right it's squared off uh, it's cool looking industrial chic it's got this like I thought this bottom piece was so stupid like why would you give me like why am I paying for this extra metal but it's a handle it's like oh, it's just the right weight it's these these um, these legs are relatively dull, so they don't. The, my one complaint actually is these are too these get too fat too fast I think, um, and so they tend to overbend the switch legs a little bit. But for the most part, what I love about this is that any other switch opener tool I've used, you have to jam the switch down, really jam it down, and you can see how far out. Maybe you can't. I'm gonna show you. Please, lighting, please. You, oh, you know what that is? That's my stupid laptop screen. Oh, that's awful. It's the most potato stream ever. Anyway, th I'm probably damaging the switch even doing that. So that forces the legs out really wide. And what that does is that this stuff, it like bends it permanently. It like weakens the plastic and you put it back on and then it's just, like the top housing, let's compare to one that, you know, I, I've never touched. I love it. 
that doesn't wiggle like at all. This is the innovation of the Zelio V2. The top housing is so much better than the old ones. But you open it once and you just throw that all out the window, which is why I think I'm told that's originally why films and stickers became a thing is because people loosen, you know. But so even with this tool, it loosens the heck out of a top housing. And every other tool I've used is worse than this one. This one, I can open a switch with the least amount of leg bending. And so not only is it like perfect for my desired workflow, I also think it's actually the best in terms of taking care of the switches that you're putting a lot of effort into and in some cases spent a lot of money on like these. So that is my recommendation. It's the second best tool because there are other tools that can replace it. I think they're inferior, but they exist. This is the best tool because nothing comes close to this end. This is, this is fine. I actually use this a lot for like, I use it for like artisans. I'm, it's just because I always have this. And so I always have this. So it's like, it's just, and this is like a handle too. Like, like it's a, it's just like this. Is there like a Nobel prize for like, just fucking smart stuff? Like this is smart. This is smart. This is like OTD putting in a brass weight to lower the resonant frequency smart. Like, damn, this is smart. I haven't looked at chat in a while. Hope you're all hyped up. Roasting all your tools. <laughs> um, yeah, dude, the IC puller. Get Weeha drivers. No, I want money's locked up in keyboards. <laughs> yeah, I'll. Um, I yeah, I, I don't want to just like sit there and talk. I'm, I'm, do you guys want to hear my HHKB? This was this is a. Do you guys know? You probably probably know. Uh, Weez or Gary on Discord, he sold me this beauty. Um, I've never opened a Topra keyboard. I'm a fraud with Topra keyboards. This was like a beautifully, masterfully modded HHKB. And I'm like, HHKBs are great. And then I remember that everyone else's HHKB is not this HHKB. And I'm like, wow, you guys must have a rough life. Because this one, uh, like, I'm typing on this slidey thing but it's fine. by the way also all right i'm just showing off all my shit that's fine this is a cool trackball elecom def pro this is this is a fun thing it's wireless it does the job all right so let me try to get you guys a link yeah so this has a kinnick this has a um bluetooth uh aftermarket controller made by hasu uh so you know you lose the usb port functionality but it's wireless so who cares um, I wonder if the battery's gonna die. I should probably plug it in at some point, but whatever. So let me try to find you guys a link for these, this switch puller here. I'll, uh, I guess I'll do the KBD fans link. I'll do the Amazon link in case anyone has feelings about KBD fans. Probably have to do a whole bunch of... Just disable it. Oh man, like how do I even search for this thing? Uh, Polar. Polar doesn't, isn't spelled with three L's. Should I fix that? Ah, switching keycaps, Polar, here we go. <laughs> you know what the best part about this thing is? You know why, the, you know how you know this is the best tool in keyboards? I don't know, I'm not, I have poor reflexes, I don't, Games and I, I've played many games for a long time, but I'm not good at them. Uh, so I have no, like, okay, maybe, maybe there's a little delay, but it's not anything I would like ever care about. So you know why this, you know how you know this is the best tool in keyboards? Because look at this URL. It's just product. It's, it's the, er, like the ultimate keyboard tool. It's just the product. It's what you want. It's what you need. It's the product. And I'll try to find the Amazon one as well. comes in a two pack oh man that's a different brand from what i'm used to but oh man a two pack oh. have two of these man definitely have two of these 
I've never even seen this this brand before, but I don't care. No, it doesn't automatically pinch for you. You have to, but another ingenious aspect of the design. I just keep going on. The, the part that you grip, if you grip it, it pinches for you when you grip it. So no, it, it's not like automatic, but like if I hold it in the most natural place to hold it, it fucking grips for you. Like, what is this ingeniousness? It, it does... Uh, I, I... I, like, want to kiss whoever made this. It's just... It's a work of art. Alright, I should share that link. You may... <laughs> I can kiss you anyway. Are you coming to KeyCon? I can kiss you there. You can set up a kissing booth. Salt Rock Lamp kissing booth. Alright, I have to show I have to show off uh, uh, Weez's keyboard uh, Topher keyboard modding skills for a second. I'm just gonna do a typing test. I'm not even gonna finish it. Ah, uh, hold on. I should set this up better because you can't hear. That's kind of clever. Just slide it all out of the way. Get that. Get that ASMR going. All right. thing is how would I describe the feeling of Topra? <laughs> These, <laughs> um, uh, how do I describe to it's like you know like how I mean it's a rubber think of like everything you hate about a rubber dome keyboard and then take all that away and then like sprinkle some of it back in but for the most part it's gone that's Topra <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to describe. No, so the BKE domes are like popping a popping a like bubble wrap. I don't like them. I don't like that at all. It's way too tactile. This is like, uh, it's it's like, I, I, I don't know this and this thing and it's plasticky. I love ABS plastic. Cricket, like ah, oh, it's a nice wedge. It's got a height. It's it it slides around. It needs more feet. I gotta put more feet on it. But like, people, oh, it's cheap, it's plasticky. Like, first of all, no, it doesn't like flex at all. It creaks a little because it's plastic, but it's not like a G80 where it's like, eh, eh, eh. and it, it, it just it has that, like a, it, 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 the plastic accentuates the thock. And you can be sitting working on the train, uh, you know, on Amtrak or whatever, or on the on the, the plane, and you're just like, thock, thock, thock. I'm the coolest guy ever in the library, piss everybody off, thocking away. This one's quiet. So you, like, it's not actually loud enough for people to complain because it's actually probably better sounding than a laptop keyboard. Get that ASMR white noise for everybody else in the library. I have no idea how to make Topra good, but I own a beautiful Topra keyboard. <laughs> That's all I care about. And I can recommend it. Find someone to do a Topra board up for you because I have no idea how to do it. There will one day be a build stream where I'm taking apart my... Uh, fancy old vintage Topra keyboard and dome swapping and moving and stuff. So that will happen and I will get roundly criticized for my inexpert Topra modding ability. But until then, I have this to enjoy. So let's, at long last, let's open up some switches. What does the Topra stem look like? That's a good question. What does the Topra stem look like? Yeah, it's a cylinder. Um, well, I'll show you. I'll show you. Where, this is... This is a very educational stream. I'm not. I'm not the Nathan Kim. I'm not the. I don't know who else is high in build streams nowadays. I, I don't. I'm not here for like the aesthetic of it. I'm not here for. Partly like the only reason I'm streaming. I, I like talking to you guys, but I like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> but I like showing off weird stuff. Like I have this collection, so you can see, it's like. The stem. It's not even, it doesn't even have a flange. It's just like a, like a, like a flared, it's like a, like a flared stem. So it, it comes up like that a little bit and it, and it can squish together. And so the Topra slider itself has this, it's just a cylinder. 
po poking up out of this plastic housing that's attached to a plastic plate. Right? And so this two-piece thing just pops into the cylinder. I, it just stays in place somehow. And it has these two, I get, it has these two little, I can't see that, two little, uh, like little tabs in there. And those correspond with the slots in here. And so it's keyed, so you can't put it in sideways. You can only put it in one way. You can put it upside down, but you can't put it in sideways. It snaps in though. It cuts the joy of changing. <laughs> changing keycaps is never fun. Be so. I'm gonna get a new camera as soon as I do the research and figure out what's a good webcam to buy. Um, if it snaps in though, I don't. It's it's black magic. It's held in with black magic fuckery, is what I can conclude. Couldn't tell you what what's actually going on. That's some engineering and science stuff that I don't know about. What's my budget? I can recommend one. Um. I, I don't know. What what can I get? I, I don't love the what's your budget question because it's like I want to know what I can get for my money. Let's say, let's say my budget is as high as it needs to be for a product that does the job. And the job I need to do is not have a webcam attached to my laptop and not have it look like a potato. So whatever I can, like whatever the, and like it works with Linux. So whatever like the the cheapest webcam I can get that does that job and is reliable. So like, yes, it comes with a tripod, streams in 1080. Sure, yeah, so how much does that run me? That's, okay, that's. Yeah, like I could do that. I did that last time, but I didn't like I don't know, streaming on my phone was weird because like if somebody texted me it got messed up. Yeah, black magic fuckery. Ever heard of it? Alright. Um eighty dollars that's a good price, I think. That's that's like within the realm of I can spend this. I would say my budget like okay. I wouldn't spend like a hundred bucks. A yeah, hundred bucks is like probably hot. Eighty is probably what I would want to pay before I start feeling like I'm buying equipment I don't need, or I'll just like get a cheap webcam and, and who cared? Yeah, exactly. Like so. Okay, I'll C nine two two. Let me look this up right now before I forget. There's a C922 and a C922X. The X is $6 cheaper. I don't know. I'll get the one you recommend. <laughs> Do not get the X if I want the tripod. That's Is that the only difference? Is that I pay, I'm paying $7 for a tripod? That's a steal for like a tripod. All right, I'll do the 922. Thank you very much for the recommendation. Uh, one thing I need to do is set up, set myself up for success. And by that I mean actually organize my workstation. Don't need lube right now. Slider. Housing. Springs I don't care about. Top hat. It's not most organized, but I definitely like to get into a flow. I like to be systematic when I am uh, opening switches. Joby Plus? I don't know what that is. Hmm. Interesting. So sometimes, the one thing with the key boss, I think it's actually it's too gel delicate sometimes, and it doesn't actually get up under the leg enough and so you, you could just saw me I had to um, I'll, show, I'll show that technique actually even though I probably don't need it on every switch so sometimes what happens with the key boss 
is yeah, it didn't do it for this one. You know, when I when it when it does it again, I'll show it. It it incompletely opens a switch, um, and the younger, dumber me got really frustrated about that, and uh, would like just smash down harder. And that's not the answer. It's never the answer in, in like any kind of hobby where you have to do things. More room. I'm like T Rex armed up here. Things are snapping open very nicely. No, it didn't do it. Sort of did it. No, it didn't do it. This table's also like too high for me because I'm really small. And so I feel like I'm like shrugging my shoulders to like access everything. But I don't really need to be shrugging my shoulders to access everything. I just use my arms. It's funny how like little ergonomic things, like it's like, especially with this, with this, uh, in fact, I'm going to do this wood thing for now because it's actually kind of bugging me out. It's too tall. That's, yeah, that's like already way more comfortable. You feel that? Move the mic a little bit. Sorry, there's noise. Yeah, it's a little more pleasant like that. Should leave like a little. Slider is going to come. Top housing, we're going to kick out this way. And the slider will stick to the top housing. And then right, I should be able to have a little porthole to reach these with my left hand, which I don't normally do, but that's fine. All right, let's pretend it happened here. So, check this out. I'll just exaggerate it. This switch is only open on one side. So, what can happen with the key boss is it, does, it just doesn't get in there enough. And it only opens it on one side. And then what happens is that, I think what happens is that it actually bends and softens the unopened side. And so it actually just gets harder and harder. Like I think every time you like fail to open it this way, it like gets harder to open the next time. And so instead of just smashing it down on there, trying to get it open, and trying to like pop the top off, don't do that. Instead, the old like mechanicalkeyboard.com uh, keycap removers, like. Uh, Krellbit demonstrates this on his stream really masterfully where you actually use it to pry the top off and you flip it over and pry the top off and he does it very smoothly. I, I feel like I'm, I'm damaging my switches whenever I do it so I, I don't do it. I'm not very efficient at it. Um, but so you can use that technique by just flipping the key boss around which again I don't know if you can do that on a nutcracker. Um, and uh, you, uh, I'm trying to show you but anyway you, you just take these two teeth and you pry it up under the, you, you, you squeeze. It's the same technique as with the, with the mechanical keyboard.com opener. Uh, and you take this and you squeeze up under the legs and you get up over the legs and then of course I snap the other side closed because I'm terrible at this. And it's hard to do. Stick my arms out in front of me. There you go. See, I actually screwed this up now because they're all like bent out of shape. Shit. So this switch is gonna rattle and feel shitty. I might just throw it out. Fuck. Well, eh, you can see it go wrong. Goes right, goes wrong sometimes. Happens. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna. I'll <laughs> I bent that one, I bent the legs in that one really bad, so I'll come back to that one if I run out. But uh, yeah, so as you can see, that's the one problem with the key boss. Um, and because I'm so bad at the mechanicalkeyboard.com opener method, most people are not as bad as me. I'm like legendarily bad at it. Uh, so it's fine for most people, you can, you can do that. In fact, I got myself out of a jam that way uh, a couple times earlier today, it was fine. That one did not go well, um, but you can do that. Uh, if you get stuck with it, but these have been opening pretty pretty well for the most part. I like that. I like that flow. This should probably be over here. So, admittedly, you know, I use the key boss somewhat like as a crush because, you know, back in the day, 
when I was a younger keyboard nerd, I wasn't really opening switches. And then uh, those 3D printed switch openers came out right as I was getting into like aggressively modding things. And so I never had to like live in a world where my only key opener was either the MK.com opener or a screwdriver. Um, very likely I never would have gotten, I wouldn't have gotten into modding switches so much because, or maybe I would have gotten good at the MK.com opener technique, I don't know. I'm also probably too cautious about the tops, like they're gonna get bent out of shape no matter what. I should just let, the, let it be and then use films like I was gonna do anyway. Uh, on linears it's also not such a big deal. On uh, tactiles, the films actually change the tactility. On a lot of them they increase the tactility. Uh, so like on MX Browns, um, they significantly increase the tactility actually, it's pretty cool. Um, uh, the one switch I will not film is the mod switch. I don't know about with a slider swap, you know, maybe swapping that slider into a cherry housing or something, I'm not really not sure. But I know in a stock mod switch, if you take that switch and you put a film in it, there's this like, okay, so if you're not familiar, the mod switch is like some seemingly Gateron made switch, almost like a Zelio. Um, yeah, like you watch, dude, you watch, um, yeah, exactly, and that goes to the other side. Yeah, uh, some people are good at like Krell bits, so efficient with it. I'm, it's really impressive. I'm terrible at it. Uh, where do I get my springs? These are uh, Cat Wee Wee V2 springs, so these are no longer available. Uh, but I try to get them from either aftermarket or uh, community vendors, like uh, just whoever's selling springs and isn't a scammer. <laughs> um, and the springs look good. I bought springs from KBD fans. I bought springs from 1UP. I bought springs from YMDK. I do not recommend the YMDK springs. Um, I bought springs from Kibo.LA, who's like a very under under the radar vendor. Don't recommend them because I think they source from YMDK. I actually had a long email interchange with one of the people there. Their springs are all marked down. I think they're trying to clear stock so they can buy them from a better vendor, uh, which I really appreciate. They listen to the community. They're very under the radar, but they listen to the community. Uh, so as I was saying, the only switch I won't film is the mod switch. I don't know about the linears. The linears were very underwhelming. Uh, basically like an inferior Gateron linear, uh, probably made on old tooling, who the hell knows. Um, I assume they're Gateron because they look exactly like a Gateron switch. But they're, the, the bump, it's almost like a Zelio. Uh, Zelio V1, not a Zelio V2, it's completely different. It's almost like a Zelio V1, except I had a, I have a picture of it somewhere, um, but I don't know where it is right now. Maybe I have the power of OBS, but it's oh, I'm on the wrong computer. So okay, so like, how do I describe this? Okay, so the Zelio bump, like, so here's like the switch, right? It's so stupid. The Zelio bump is like the leg starts here. And it goes down, and then it goes up, and then it has this nice round bump, and then it goes back, and then you're then you're at the top of the you're at the bottom of the stroke, right? The mod switch, the angle at the end of the leg is less steep, and it's a little higher. So instead, like the Zelio has this like you you like you're like you start like like you know because the switch is preload, right? There's there's some um, pre compression, so the spring the 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 slider is already part way down on the contact leaf when the when the top housing is closed. So the Zelio, you start like at the bottom of this valley, and then you gotta like haul up over this like big round hill and then come back down. And with the mod switch, the valley is the starting valley is not as deep. And so you have less of a climb, but you have the exact like the back half of the of the of the, the bump is exactly the same shape. And so with the mod switch, you don't have like with the Zelio, it's like ba bum. Like it because you know it was a, it was derived from the MX clear, right? And the MX clear is like chunk. It's like you, you hit like a speed bump and it's the pointy one and you go over it too fast. The Zelio, it's like they rounded off the top of it, but they still had that buh bump kind of feeling. The mod, it's less of a buh, but you still have the bump. So it's like buh bump. It's almost more like rolling off of something. Like you, you're like already start close to the top of the hill and then you roll off the hill. As opposed to the Zelio, you got to get up the hill and then over it. And it just has a nicer, it makes for like a little bit of a smoother experience and somehow when you put a film that extra what is that half a millimeter of height 
throws off the whole balance and it just is not the same. And it's still good tactile, it just doesn't, it, it throws it off just ever so slightly and it's really disappointing because I feel like a filmed Mod M switch or a Mod L, uh, you know, you swap the springs on them anyway, they're Gateron springs, whatever. A mod switch, you choose the, the one that corresponds to the color you like, right? A filmed mod switch would be like the end game switch, but you can't do it because of the damn... I, I don't know. And I'm like, it's just in my head, it's all in my head, or maybe it has to do with the, the amount of play that's in the top housing, and you know, the reason it makes it more tactile, I think, is because it pushes it more consistently up against the contact leaf. Here's the contact leaf, and here's a slider leg, uh, you know, running up over it like that. I think the film helps keep it vertical instead of pushing the slider back. Um, for some reason, it ruins the perfectly balanced tactility, and it is a tragedy. Because let me show you, let me get a board with Lube 3204, but not filmed Mod M's, and you will see why they need films. To be fair, this board has DCS caps on it, which, as we all know, sounds like tinkling on glass, but it accentuates the point, it does not change the point. <laughs> Tactility and switch films, dude. I care about human rights. Actually, I care about, I don't know, I care about you guys. I care about, like, I genuinely, I have spent a lot of money and time, like, researching like all the weird oddball corners of like the keyboard world. Like I don't have, like I didn't, I didn't even try to enter the Jane V2CE group by, right? Like I don't, it would be cool to have that stuff, but like instead I have like piles of weird shit. Cause like, I don't know, I wanna just like, it's under documented, right? Like no one, this is a resin tray mount case for the minivan by Idea23, it looks cool. Like no one has these, they made like, I don't know, 20 prototypes. Sold them on Mech Market. I have no idea who owns the other ones. I, I get a resin, cast resin. Who has a resin, cast resin case? It's cool, right? Um, so these are plateless, <laughs> um, <laughs> plateless Mod Ls with I think an Outamu 68 gram spring or something like that. So they're just Mod L, but just because I, pink slider. Come on. Nice, great pink color too, by the way. Um, nice, deep pink. Uh, and this, as good as they feel, this is what they sound like. Which I just... I... I has DCS caps on it. Let's put a not DCS cap on it. It's still just... It's like plasticky and like... Empty, soulless, sucks the fun out of the whole thing. You gotta film your switches, especially. Well, you gotta film all your switches, but these, just film, film your, film your switches unless it really doesn't feel good to film them. It's worth it. You're already opening them because you're swapping the springs because most stock springs suck. Film your switches. Close my ears. <laughs> show us the collection. All right, I'll show I'll show some collection after. I want to open these switches. Maybe I'll bring some other keyboards out. Um, close my ears when I type on it. Yeah, I should probably take the DCS caps off of them. Unfortunately, those are minivan layout caps. <laughs> uh, it's plateless because I don't have a plate. I, I don't... This was like around when the van started going plateless. I don't know if they ever sold standalone plates. I bought this PCV standalone. I didn't buy... I don't own like an aluminum milled minivan. Um, that's my only, I actually own two minivans, but neither of them are in a standard minivan case. Uh, so this doesn't have a plate. I could probably get a plate made for it, but I like how, it, like, it's weird to like, this is like plateless clears, like it's, it's kind of like intense for what you would normally do for uh, a plateless, but it works. It's tray mount, like tray mount plates are really overrated unless you, 
Again, so this also has the same setup as the uh, the JD45, where it's got ribs going across. So I feel like the plate's kind of useless. It, it ostensibly it would help distribute vibration from the switch a little bit better, but it might make for a harsher bottom out because there's the resin actually seems to absorb a good amount of vibration. Um, like it doesn't feel like I'm typing on PLA. There's some softness to it. Still feel like the softness of like FR4. Um, and like maybe the plate would change, but it feels it feels really interesting. The tactility is quite strong. It's probably a little too tactile for a 40%. Um, I have a road kit as well. I'll probably take these switches out someday and put them in like I don't know. Maybe I'll put them in the Polaris or something. Or uh, what else do I have that's gasket coming? Unicorn, but that is a brass plate, which I'm going to try to sell. I don't know why I bought a brass plate. Maybe it'll go in like a Polaris or something one day. What is that? See you, Charles. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put this on YouTube. Oh, here you go. Here's a, here's a casualty. I did say ostensibly visionaire. So here is a casualty of bad switch opening and I actually think I did this with the CIY opener just so you can hopefully see that like indentation and it doesn't really affect the switch at all I think it, it, it makes films sit more poorly and I've tried to like unbend it by like taking this and like putting it in the slot and like unbending it it might just be permanently bent. That seems to have done it. I wonder if it'll snap. It'll yeah. It's like it's gonna like retreat back. There's even, I can see there's like stress. Like the plastic is all bent up, and there's like stress marks in the plastic. So it's it's a real thing. <laughs> Use your switch opener. The trick, the technique to this thing, is get a really firm grip on the bottom housing. Make sure you're gripping the bottom housing really firm, and then like wiggle a lot and go slow it's like taking off like dcs alps keycaps or something like really like baby it you know and spend the quality time <laughs> to make sure that you don't damage your one dollar switches Dude, with the heat gun. i don't know man <laughs> that might get a little melty um Screw this one up. This one, you know what? This one is a little bit bent out of shape. I'll put that one up to be in the bent out of shape pile. Leave that there. Oh, I have. I'm no longer counted out correctly. I have two that I've taken out of commission, so I need to add two back. And I've taken two out of commission there, so I need to add four. Hear the radio announcer. Dance in the Bolero, slow grind. Tales of his youth. Not my youth. A lot younger than that. See, I had, see how far I had to like, oh, I can't even see. I had to like really yank this top off. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this one to the side. Life's too short for bad keyboard builds. You're already taking all the switches apart. Already putting all this work in. Don't make any compromises. Which is why <laughs> there's no stabilizers in this layout. Because I evidently am not very good at stabilizers. Um, 
I don't know what I did. I greased it, I checked it, I rechecked it, I checked it like five times. And on what should be my nicest keyboard, spacebar rattles. And it is so sad. Whenever I press that spacebar, I'm like, clip, 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 clank, clank, clank. It's, uh, it's just so sad. I'll bring that, I'll show that up. I've, I've shown that one off on Discord too much. You guys have all seen that. And this was like, I, I, how's the LZCS, CLSH? How's that keyboard? Is that keyboard good? Wow, someone said it was their favorite keyboard. Is that your favorite keyboard? Wow, what a cool keyboard. It's a Korean custom. I don't probably never own a Korean custom. And I got one. And I took pictures of it. And I put it on Discord. My shitty iPhone. I refuse to damage a switch in the service of opening it. I accept that I am not survival of the fittest. I would have not been the fittest. I would have failed to adapt, and I would not be have been a switch modder in 2016. I would not have been opening my switches with a screwdriver and stickering them because I'm so bad at opening them that way. I just never would have done it. Who knows what would have happened to me. Then again, I had an odd path into this hobby anyway. My first keyboard was a used Ergodox Easy with Gateron Browns that I bought off eBay for, I want to say like $225, which I think was actually quite a good deal, considering that new nowadays, you know, with the Shine and all that there and Hot Swap, they're well over $300. I think they were that much then too. Um, see that one actually I did, I did that, I executed, you. I was off camera of course, but I executed that one well enough that I feel like I have not bent this top housing up badly enough to warrant tossing it, so I'm gonna do this. Also, I can't remember, well, if I don't have enough, I don't know. I'm tempted to actually just lube up all these, this whole batch. I'm not gonna open all of them on the stream, but because now I have, so this was 90, and now I have 45 with potentially one, two, three, four, five, six out of commission. So that leaves me with 39 switches. Who buys 90 switches and then builds a 45 keyboard with them? <sighs> Mech market. Have unusable amount of Securios. Want, please, some fraction of what I paid. <laughs> yeah, that, that's... Um, that's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to get, uh, I think I use super lube. I don't wanna mix lubes. I, I, what I'm gonna try to do is maybe, I don't know like if they make like a syringe attachment for the bottle. Okay, maybe, yeah. I sort of hoard switches. I might like, I mean, I might try to like do some swaps. Like maybe I'll swap the sliders into um, cream housing or something. But yeah, like I just didn't buy enough. Ooh, this one, this one's, not smooth. Don't tell me. Oh, don't tell me. I have this problem, please. Okay, no, it's it's. There's. The other thing I noticed with switches. I think the leaf matters a lot more than people give the, give it credit for, for the smoothness of the switch. Um, I, I almost think, like... So when I tilt, I, you can, you know, you can always rock the slider forward and back a little bit. So when I rock it towards the contact leaf, the switch in my left hand is 
noticeably, immediately noticeably scratchier than the one in my right. Um, huh. I assume if there's any of those in here that lube will take care of it. But that's worth noting. I ha So this is similar to the problem I had with inks. With inks it was way worse. It was like, it felt like there was like a pebbled patch of the, of the housing. It was gross. That was bad. Um, did I count out? Whatever. If I don't have enough, I don't have enough. I'll count them out as I'm uh, top loading them. So, that's a nice thing. But yeah, so, so some, some switches, like, I guess if you really got to do it right, you got to sit there cherry pick. I guess we all have to make sacrifices, right? Life's too short for bad keyboard builds. But life's also too short to obsess over a keyboard build. <laughs> um, so the one nice thing that JD Carpe, or whoever actually designed Wilba did with this PCB, is they actually numbered all the switches. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, potato. There you go, no, no, no. Okay, so I know, just by looking at the keyboard, that there are 47 switches required. No more, no less. Ergo, I need to make sure I have 47 springs. That's it. This, I think, is a 100 pack, which gives me 53. Also, sort of a not usable amount. So I'm tempted to off stream, take the rest of these, and mate them with this. These. And then I have like a few springs left over to experiment. I can put them in an MX Black. I, I, I have some stuff planned for Keycon. I don't know if I'll actually get around to it, but I have some, some spring comparison stuff compare, uh, planned for Keycon. Uh, so I might just make these, make friends with each other. And then like I can, I can, when I sell this keyboard, I can bundle them with the keyboard and say extra switch is not going to split. I don't know. Visionary, maybe. Like Visionary, if I do sell the switches, I might not sell them. But if I do sell them, I will let you know first because you asked and you're cool. So yeah, let's get that get that Monka Monka S in chat. We're gonna tub loot, boys and girls. I would love to know where the Monka S like why they chose that as the trigger for the emote. Thick loop onto the back of the houses. The leaf matters a lot. Yeah, that's like Zeal's thing, right? Like, I wonder if even, like, you know. And then again, Gazoo ships me <laughs> switch bottom housings from Arizona. And I guess they're consistent enough, or the switches are so tactile, it doesn't matter. Um, added some thick lube into the back of the housing and actuated switch to clean it up. Yeah, I guess over time. Some will uh, work its way into, uh, some lube will just work its way in there, right? I thought I may take it too thick and jam some in. I'll, I'll try that. Maybe I can do it on stream, because if I, I'm not gonna solder this thing together tonight. It's gonna get late. Uh, my roommate's gonna come back and I don't wanna like, just be set up in the kitchen, <laughs> streaming. So what I like to do when I tub lube springs, um, let's get these things out of the way. What I like to do when I tub lube springs is to untangle the springs first, then put them in the tub, then do the build, shake and bake, and then untangle them again to the best extent that I can before I start building. Because untangling springs while you're building is annoying. Um, and then if you don't untangle them before you tub lube, you don't get as good coverage. And I've tested this, like I've done, I mean, I haven't tested it with, you know, scientifically side by side, I guess, but I've done it where I don't, I used to not untangle them, I didn't think it mattered. So I'll just untangle them after. And there were some switches that were very well covered and, and some springs were, would still ping. Um, and this way it seems, ooh, come on, come on, come on. So for the most part, it seems like the coverage is just a little better because they're just, there's more, they can they can move around more. 
Uh, they're not, um, save the t it's easier with your fingers. I'll save the tweezer for when they're all oil, you know, I don't want to get oil everywhere. Uh, so the oil I use to do springs, um, I switch back and forth. I'm not using the TX paraffin oil because I have to open up the box and uh, I, I might as well use that, the TX springs. Um, and also it does not as, it does not perform as well as this random unnamed oil I got from Metkey Alpha who's based in Hong Kong and like no one knows who they are but they sell Gateron switches. They uh, actually sold a Milmax based hot swap 60% PCB long before the HS60 came out. Of course it's not RGB. It was like 45 bucks for a hot swap PCB. It was pretty cool. Um, so Metkey Alpha sold and still sells unnamed just lubricating oil. And somewhere in the description it says 1000 CST which is a centistoke which is a unit of viscosity. Um, and somebody, I was talking to somebody on Discord, and I was like, yeah, I use the Metkey Alpha oil. It's, you know, it's really cheap. It's $5. I got two vials of it. This has lasted me for literally hundreds of springs, and I'm not even halfway through the vial yet. Um, and this guy goes, oh, you know that, you know what I know what this stuff is? This is silicone oil. Uh, we use this for cubing. Um, and CST, you know, 1,000 CST is considered a very light oil for cubing. Uh, but it's considered, that's, a, that's between... GPL 105 and 106. I think it's a little less uh, vis viscous than GPL 106. So it's perfect for springs. Uh, it works on a switch. It's okay. It's fine. It does the job. Um, I think in the past when I'd experimented with it, it, it feels a little watery. I think I would rather use Crytox. Um, but I, I actually don't see why you couldn't use it on springs. Anyway, so it turns out this silicone lubricant uh, can be had on Amazon in like big bottles for uh, like more than, way more than I will ever need in a lifetime for $5 instead of a little vial. So like, I guess you get more for your money, <laughs> but like you don't need it. Let me, um, let me find a link to that actually on Amazon. So I'll, I'll put the Netkey outfit link in chat. There you go. 80 weight. Team associated 80 weight silicone shock oil. So this is the stuff that's apparently the same. Oh, I forgot to take out all the link tracking spam. Sorry. And this, like Mackey Alpha is so cool. They're so under the radar. They only sell like plate mount switches though. It's kind of weird. This is probably a vendor. Someone's like, has like war stories about Mackey Alpha from like 2016 or something. I just never heard of them. It's definitely worth acknowledging my youngness in the hobby still. Limited slip up. Yeah, I think I saw you say that. Is that stuff, I mean, is stuff plastic safe? Um, I mean, any kind of grease should do the job. Um, yeah, uh, you'll never need a quart. Yeah, like this cool little number pad, right? Like it looks like, uh, I mean, it, it looks like if Dolphin, or if Lynn, you know, if this was on Lynn's Instagram, or uh, this would be like, like KB Customs would be talking about it. Nice little, I mean, okay, USB port's not perfect, but I'm sure you, you lack in the fit and finish in some other areas. But, dude, it has a weight with a badge. Or a, like, like what? That's cool, man. That's really cool. I guess I can add a, uh, a scene. I'm learning how to use OBS as I go. The whole thing is just... This thing is cool, man. 
you want a numpad? 120 bucks or whatever it is. What is this price? This is like a this is a nice custom numpad. Unbranded. Like who's who is who made this? Who designed this? I have no idea. Is it QMK? I have no idea. Is that a brass plate? I have no idea. Or is that anodized? It looks like aluminum. I don't know what Chinese typing. Does anyone know what um, uh, Chinese typing needs a number pad for? Macros. Yeah, I wonder if there's a name for this PCB. Boot mapper. Hey, all right. That ostensibly, then and I said ostensibly twice. I shouldn't say it twice. Kills the word. Conceivably, this means it could be converted to QMK. Optional, enjoy PBT keycaps. What? Free shipping over a certain quantity for... Wow. Oh, and these come with... This, this comes with switches. What? DIY or hot swap. Yo, I bet this has the same sockets. All right, this is not this is not the point of my stream, but... It's like... I don't know, there's this weird... Uh, this weird stuff that... Um, You don't always see. Cool. Yeah, exactly, right? It looks like a LAN keyboard, or, or like maybe, a, I don't know, it doesn't look like a TGR. If Fox Labs showed this off. It's just a grid system for the different characters. Oh, like you can put like, like the, was, was like a radical or a stroke? in like a certain area with the, that's wild. That's actually really clever, that's cool. Yeah, like like if uh, if Fox Labs was like, this is the Leaf numpad, people would be like, yes, I'm buying that. You know, but no no one knows about it. Maybe it's, maybe it's a rattly piece of junk, who knows, you know, but. So uh, where was I, I was untangling springs. I think I was saying something else too and I distracted myself five times nested like 10 levels deep in the conversation. I'm not counting these. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe I just oiled the whole bag. That's really dumb. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna oil the whole bag. Should I oil the whole bag? What do you think? Chat, what do you think? You're laughing at me because it's... I'm dumb, but what do you think I should do? So I oil all of them, and then just put them back in the bag, oily, and hope the bag doesn't leak? I might do that, but then I have to untangle them all. Alright, no, I'm just going to untangle them. <sighs> Two wrapped up in that numpad. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, and thirty-five, thirty-six, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven. All right, I didn't do too many extra. Watch on this camera. Anyway. All right, we're done with these for now. Okay, tub living. Buy a sandwich bag. Keep all the oils. Yeah, I, um, oh, you said everything. <laughs> All right, well, 
No, I, it's going to take too long. I, that, that wasn't so bad. I already did it. I, I stand by my decision, I think. So tub looping, I'm sure most of you guys, like I know you guys, I know your names, so I know you know what tub looping is. But just for the sake of education, I know watching the VOD. Um, this, this oil's in a little squeeze bottle, so you can squirt it into your eye if you so choose. I'm pretty sure this is actually, like, they bought, like, a bunch of eyedropper bo bottles on Taobao or Alibaba, and then, like, have a giant thing of this, like, shock oil that they're probably just pouring into these things. Who knows? Maybe you've got, like, a scale. Um, and so this is a small amount of springs. It's, like, a smaller than, you know, smaller than I usually do. Um, so I'm going to... It's an unscientific amount, but it's it's... It's like I, I put, <sighs> okay, Do you, you guys don't know because you're not from New York. So it's like, if you have like a, like a, like a, like a, like a halal platter, right? You've got like shawarma and your rice and your, and your pickled vegetables. And you want to just put like a nice, good coating of hot sauce. Like you've already have like a lot of the, the white tahini sauce, right? And so that's like kind of soaking in. And you just want to like get like like just the right amount of hot sauce in there so that when you're all mixing it up with your fork, it just gets like in there a little bit, but it's not like drowning it in hot sauce. That's the amount, this is most ridiculous, but that's the amount of oil you want to use. So like, it just kind of, it just drips out and then like, you just see a few, this, this tends to really glob up. And it's okay if you use a little extra because it'll just pool in the, uh, you know, it'll, it'll pool in the wells in the, in the container and that's fine. Um, this is, but yeah, so like, and maybe, maybe I'll put one more. Just just enough. You want to get the, the spice, but you don't want to overwhelm your dish. Um, and so, yeah, we were talking in KB Customs this morning. Someone had like, was like tub lubing in a Rubbermaid container. And someone was like, ooh, you're a wealthy guy. This is brand name Ziploc plastic containers. Only the best for our keyboards. And I only bought these because these are the ones that were just at the store. But yeah, don't like, I like how rigid they are, but it's completely unnecessary. Get the cheap dollar store ones. Because you're not using them for food anyway. I, it's, a lot of this stuff is food safe. I wouldn't eat it. Nathan Kim is a braver, braver man than I am. He drank lube water, so I'm not going to do that. All right, so you close it up. And you shake. I don't like to shake too hard on these. Because uh, then I just, I don't know. Maybe I should shake hard. You do want to get good, like, first of all, these are stuck in, like, a puddle of mood. It's very high viscosity stuff. It's like, you can see, actually, this is actually maybe a good demonstration of how, how, how viscous this is. It's actually holding the spring stuck up to the side. This stuff's very gluey, um, which theoretically should make it good for the spring, because then it won't shit out fall off over time. Alright, so I gotta shake these hard. Do it in the microphone. These will be very tangled. But they come apart easy because they're lubed. Uh, another hot tip for anyone younger than I in the hobby. If your springs are stuck together, You've heard this on other streams before, but I'm going to say it now. If your springs are stuck together, I almost want to get two pairs of tweezers for this. Because I, I don't like getting this stuff in my fingers. It actually irritates my fingers a little bit. If you get springs that are all mashed up together like this, do not pull them apart. You probably saw me do this. Do not pull them apart. Because you will ruin the spring. Because what it does is it, it, it actually stretches out the spring. Um, and then because of physics that I don't fully understand, it makes the spring stiffer so don't pull on a spring if a spring gets pulled and it looks visibly different from another spring toss it because it's going to feel different and it's unreliable and inconsistent um, the other nice thing about tub lubing in these containers is that it sort of forms a well it forms like a dry area in the middle and then like like kind of a, although this actually distributes itself very nicely on the walls but it, it sometimes will form like a little the paraffin oil doesn't distribute as nicely the viscosity is lower i think and so this forms like a well here. And if you like have a spring that's too dry, you can always like dip it in this well. But this one actually, this this is very evenly distributed uh, throughout the spring bolus. <laughs> disgusting word. So that this actually seems like it did the right thing. Um, so now what I'm gonna do 
I think I had a proceed hit. Alright, I'll get another tub. I didn't want to use two tubs. No, I'll just pour them out. No, I can't do that. Alright. Yeah, I'll just get a second tub. Just for the sake of the last time. I'm also going to get another pair of tweezers so I can two-hand pull them apart without getting my fingers all oily. My whole life's a typing test. Alright, so I didn't, I, my tubs are like, God, my office is not a pleasant place to be right now. I don't know where my tubs are, I don't know where my tweezers are, these just happen to be on my desk, so I grabbed them. Um, so we are going to reuse this container. Uh, I don't really want to loop these sliders <laughs> with this oil. Again, it'll probably be fine, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just, give me another second, I'm gonna go wipe this out. I have some very nice soft uh, paper towel for this task. So normally, the reason I said anything about paper towel specifically is because paper towel and switches don't really mix. Um, lint is like an issue. Um, I know they say to use a microfiber cloth, but so these, these paper towels are like very low lint. Uh, I don't know that that's like the intention. They're much more cloth-like than your typical paper towel, which also means that they absorb a lot of liquid. I'm not shilling a paper towel brand. I won't tell you what brand they are. I don't think I know what brand they are, but they're like much more cloth-like. And uh, I like them for this kind of thing because you can reuse them a lot. Like I have one little square paper towel I could do this whole job with and then I can keep it, you know, I'll wipe the tweezers off with it. Um, and it's like pick it, it's picking up a good amount of lube and it's not getting disgusting and it's not leaving any visible uh, lint. I'm, it's a little bit of lube left inside, it's fine, whatever. Lube is lube. 
Um, but yeah, so I, I like these for like hobby work, I guess. I don't like the regular paper towels for that kind of thing. I don't like them in the kitchen either because I don't like using paper towels that much. Like I try to use a sponge and try to you know save save the the resource or whatever. But when I have to use paper towel, I'd rather use one that's going to hold up on me, you know. So springs go over here. I got the films, by the way. I actually didn't have them before. These are TX polycarbonate. I don't know how they make these. It's super cool. Maybe they laser. You can't laser cut polycarbonate. I don't know. Are they CNC machining? They must have a stamp. And they have like a long sheet of polycarbonate. Stamp them out. Who knows? Cool. Good. This this is another just like enormous brain. I don't know who. I I know LZ was designing um, the early TX keyboards. I don't know who actually invented this, but like you, whoever invented these things, is about like these two <laughs> things. Like these, these are like, it's little things. Like the MX switch, yeah, it's cool. That design had been iterated on over the course of the eighties. It's a great design. Practically, yeah, it's, it's inferior to Alps. Uh, Alps are inferior to everything, except like foam and foil and rubber. Okay, Alps are fine, Alps are fine. I'm just gonna start a, start a war there. But these are like smart as hell. These are smart as hell. These are smart things, little things. Key boss is pretty smart too. Little things. And yes, I will show for these. These are great. I was going on about them before. If you're just tuning in, no one's just tuning in because I haven't advertised this in chat forever. Maybe I should advertise in chat again. I don't know. Someone go, someone go show for me. But, uh, Alp Squad engage. Um, is it like bad form to like advertise your stream in the middle of a stream to just like go back in a discord and be like hey guys i'm still streaming is that like super uncool so hold on do we want to use the 104 or do i want to use no i don't want to use grease because last time i used grease on a silent switch it was like too silent too quiet too soft um, even with a steel plate, it was like dead silent. Um, I can pull that one out. In fact, I'll, I'll pull that one out in a second. Um, I want this to have a little fuck, especially because very likely someone's going to stick some feet to it. So there's going to be rays off the bottom. So there's going to be like air to resonate and it'll, it'll, you want that like nice, quiet, like kind of sound that you get with these Helios with this very nice, maybe inconsistent, but very, very nice feeling dampening material. So I'm not, I'm going to use a, the lightest, probably the lightest viscosity oil I feel comfortable using. Uh, 1514, I wouldn't, I almost wouldn't tub loop. I would be afraid it would just beat up and not do anything. 1514 is hard to work with. It's too low viscosity. Uh, but so this is good stuff. And so the same, same thing applies, right? Especially with this. These you can actually over lube, sort of. So I'm going to go real slow. It's just that one line of hot sauce. Uh, can I... <laughs> Right? That's probably more than enough. I, th I probably actually put too much in. This is a small, this didn't have a lot to begin. I should have noted where the level was, but there's probably too much. Again, it'll, this is low viscosity, so it will just pool in the wells if there's too much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just turn the, what am I gain set to right now? I'm just gonna turn this, turn myself down in OBS so I don't like. Is that better? <laughs> good. No sound is good for that part. This is exactly what we like to see. These are a little over lubed, I would say. I probably put too much in. But this is such a light oil, I'm not concerned about it unless they start feeling squishy. Um, it's a good coating. So you can, yeah, you can see, like, 
It's, I mean, it's all glistening, right? That's good. That's definitely been coated evenly. Um, you can't tell. So some of them are like, look a little, not even they're too glistening. They're like, you can see there's actually like, you can see the sheet of oil, which maybe is a little much. Let's put a couple switches together and see how it feels. And if it's, if it's too, um, if it's too oily, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not gonna wipe them all off, but I'll, I'll think of something, I don't know. And mind you also that the housings are not lubed at all, they're completely dry, so I think it's okay to over lube the slider a little bit, um, because it, it's gonna distribute all around the switch. And, uh, so some of it will sink to the bottom, because it's it's lo much lower viscosity. I don't know, yeah, I don't have like a lube station here or anything, it's fine. I kinda like doing this by hand too. Uh, let's, get this. All right, let's get my workstation set up again, I don't need this anymore. I'm gonna grab these from here, and I'm gonna grab these from here. The films go in the middle. I'm trying to be efficient, methodical. I don't know where the film went. <laughs> okay. These, unlike the orange films, I don't have an infinite amount of the pink ones, so I, sh I probably shouldn't just like drop them all over the place and leave them in the carpet. So let's see how these springs holding up. Yeah, it's nice and nice and like. How does this feel? This one's actually not. Hmm. No, there's a, okay, so actually this one left a good amount of its oil in the bowl. So I'm gonna try to like get, like recoat it with this oil a little bit. That's the one thing about transferring containers is that you end up wasting more uh, and, and you, you lose some to the, to the bowl. Hopefully, hopefully this doesn't ping or anything. So for anyone who has never done used films before, I'm not, Walker has done a really extensive stream on these things, so I'm not gonna go into it too much, but it's a little, uh, it's a little polycarbonate film that sits, you install it on the bottom housing, but it really more like sits, it sits between the two halves of the housing. And the theory, the operating theory, which I don't know if, why it works, but it, it, it just helps the top grip tighter. Um, and it makes the top ever so slightly taller up off the, up, you know, so there's, I guess, maybe half a mill, quarter of a millimeter more travel, I don't know. But um, it just it snaps together just like normal. What can happen with the films, I actually noticed this on inks really bad, is uh, because of the, like, just some of the top housings will try to push the film out the back or out the front. And I think what can happen in that case is part of the... Like, I don't know if this is actually what's happening. I think it's what's happening. Where, get a, <laughs> get a pointing implement here. Where this part of the film, this like inner brace piece, will, I think it'll actually be too close into the switch and it'll rub up against the slider, um, making it a little scratchy and making a sound. Um, and that, that can happen when, when so, it's not just aesthetics. Like when I, I try to make sure my films are perfectly centered because I don't want the film too far back in the switch rubbing up against the slider. And if it's too far forward, it just gets like gunked up and, it, and it, 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 it's probably fine. But you know, you don't, you don't want to have to rebuild your keyboard. So if your switches, you know, if your tops start rattling after a month, I don't know how, I don't know what would happen if it's like all crinkled up. Is it fine or not? That's why I don't. That's why I never use stickers, by the way, because the stickers are so damn annoying to apply, and they get all crinkled up. And they don't do anything. Um, so this is here. Here's our first lubed. Can you hear? I can hear without the headphones. So we're just hearing. What you're hearing right now is, I think, for the most part. just friction of inside the housing. Maybe maybe it's a little oil moving around. Maybe, uh, you know, it's still friction of the leaf on the slider leg. But it, I will say, actually, with the film, here, so here's the unmodded switch. You hear that nasty spring? The 
oil does an excellent job of damping the sound as well. And it's quieter, the stroke is quieter, so there's less friction for sure. It's cool, I like having this stuff corroborated because sometimes I second guess everything. Like, it's like, like am I just BSing myself? But no, I, I've done something here. This film does something. Uh, the, the, the film does something. The, the, the spring, or well, I mean, how does the spring feel? Huh. I feel like I've done something. Here's the point. So I, I showed this on stream last time. There's a very dirt, quick and dirty way to see relative spring weights. If I want to know if this is the, the Catway Wee Spring, uh, the V2 Catway Wee Spring, and this is the stock spring, they're both rated at 62 grams. But Zilio springs, in my experience, tend to run light. So let's see. These, I think, also maybe ran a little heavy. I don't quote me on that. I, I just subjectively, this feels heavier than 62 grams. And this feels maybe lighter than 62 grams. So we'll see, you know, is it complete BS? The, so the lighter spring should compress first. Um, and so this is the uh, this is the stock spring and this is the cat weaver spring with a film. Yeah, okay. That's, that's, that's enough to be convincing. You can see, especially right at the top of the stroke, you probably can't see on camera, the the stock spring compresses first and then they sort of converge on the same weight. So very likely Yeah. Yeah, like the, the cat wee wee spring does not want to compress as fast as the stock spring. So I don't know if the cat wee wee springs are heavy or the stock springs are light, but just put it in a in a fixed surface to maybe maybe get a better comparison here. I actually think the stock springs are probably 62 grams. I can get the, the coins out in the scale. I don't have the energy for that right now. Um, I think the cat wee springs are heavy actually, which is interesting. You know, these are, ooh. Oh, big difference. Wow. I kind of want to build this playlist. I'm not going to, but listen, here's the unmodded. I almost want to turn the sound, the music off. Oh, you can hear. It's a 90 cent switch, boys. 90 cents in group buy. Now it's over a dollar. This is what you get. Now with a $7 bag of films, $10 bag of springs, $5 oil, this is what you get next. You hear that? You get like, this gives you like a mechanical connection right from the top of the thing all the way down through the PCB into the case. This is like some bullshit with a pingy, rattly spring. That, that um, vibration you're hearing is, is the screws rattling around in the case. This is actually making me super pumped for this build. I was, I, if this, if this feels as good as I think it's gonna feel, I might keep this board. So the springs are probably too heavy, but I might keep it. Uh, Petrov, if you're feeling enterprising with that scale of yours, maybe, uh, I don't know if you have any superiors. Uh, all right, cool, that's that's good. I like when the first switch feels good and you're like, no, you don't have to fuss with it, you just, it just, it goes, man. It's a good build, it's a sign of, it's an auspicious sign. What's chat saying? That's a great point, JX man. Uh, these are linear, so I uh, hope. Yeah, the, like the film, the change travel, the lube uh, will increase the force, the actuation force a little, obviously as well. Um, that is, that's a really good point. Um, what I can do, if we, if we want to be really scientific about it, let me finish up this switch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a unfilmed, unlubricated switch, put the cat wee wee spring in it, not forget which one is which. By the way, if you're doing these, you might have to, you might have to um, work a little bit to get the top on. Just make sure it's really good and seated and centered. Uh, 
Oof. Oof. Oh, I'm re Hmm. The switch feels different from this one. No, it's just my hands. I'm ready for this build. This is gonna be a cool build. So let's take a science break real quick. Here's gonna be our stock switch. Here's gonna be our test switch. Stop this track that original spring. I just wanna do an unloaded spring. So an unloaded spring. So we can uh, hear just how unnecessary that clanky, rattly, I don't even know how to describe that sound. I'm sorry, like Zeal's a stand-up vendor, has done tremendous good for the community uh, just by pushing, pushing the envelope in terms of design. Um, uncompromising is, is a word I would say. Uh, he has a very specific product and vision and I respect what he's done, but dude, these springs suck. Let me forget which one's which now. All right, so here is our. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Di mm. What's funny is, I think subjectively, based on feel alone, if the Zeal Spring didn't feel like janky and rattly, I think I would like the Zeal Spring better. These Cat Wee Wee Springs feel a little. Uh, a little like stiff to me. I mean, that's probably just the weighting, or maybe it's the, the, the shape of the force curve. Some springs give you this feeling like you're being like sucked. In. I don't know, like I, I don't know like how to, what what matters, what doesn't, with spring. But some springs feel good and some don't. I just I don't know. So you can hear, even from across the table. Actually, this one's not so bad. You can't really hear the spring. This one's not so bad. Interesting. By the way, sound, the spring matters for sound. Um, like, it'll, uh, the, the, the heavier spring has a stronger impact against the top meaning it changes the sound. This is actually especially noticeable with Geek Makers, where the light ones, uh, they will, the, the light ones are sound rattly and they actually feel rattly, whereas like the 75 gram ones feel a lot better uh, with the stock springs and without all the films and all that jazz. Um, so it's a, that's an interesting observation. I didn't realize that until I got Geek Maker switches and I realized why do the 75 gram ones feel and sound better than the 55 gram ones? And it's because springs making a stronger impact against the top, which I think prevents it, prevents the top from rattling around because there's a slider jammed into it uh, more firmly. Okay, so subjectively, you know, if I had a blind test, maybe they feel a little different, but it's hard to say how. It's hard to say how. I f they feel a little different. And I once with the cap on it, I'm tempted to say, like, I'm tempted to say the Cat Wee Wee Spring is better, but that I know which one is which. So it's really hard for me to give uh, a fair assessment like that. Let's do the, let's do the push test. This is, we need a cute name for that. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's it's a slight difference. You're not going to be able to see this in the stream. It's a slight difference, but the zeal spring seems lighter. 
And subjectively, I was saying, this seems a little heavier than 62. Maybe, maybe it's bang on. And this seems a little lighter than 62. Maybe it's bang on, this one's heavy. And I'm used to heavier springs than I thought. Or maybe this one's bang. And so it's just one spring too, right? There is some maybe, you know, two gram variation here and there. But they feel, this one feels a little stiffer, which I think is becoming of silent switches anyway. I think a silent switch could use a heavier spring. I think it just... Again, you get that little extra bit of pop on the upstroke, which you're sorely lacking. Otherwise, you just had no tactile feedback. Otherwise, um, okay, yeah, I'm I'm going to say that the Cat Wee Wee spring is a little heavier than the, than the Securio spring. They're both 62 grams rated. Uh, is it better now that I know it's heavier? That would explain why my preference keeps bouncing around back and forth because they're heavier. Springs linear right like <laughs> um, I'll, I'll do I'll do another so just a visual comparison for you guys so you can see uh, they are in fact different they look different this is a loop one, right? so, so the, the it feels like the, the I, I think actually the diameter of the wire that they made the spring out of um, is thicker so this is the cat wheelie spring it's a this is a this is more of a whiter gold kind of color the zelio spring you can't I, it's just all it's blue because of the, the, the screen this is more of a deeper uh, reddish kind of gold color um, and the the coils on the zeal spring are much closer together um, in terms of length the zeal spring is they're about the same length they both have three winds at the end before the springy part starts. There's probably a term for that. But the big difference is it looks like the zeal spring has more coils and, well, I probably lost that one. Yeah, I'm not about to chase down a spring I don't like. Well, the vacuum will find that one. Rest in power, friend. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so they're visibly different, uh, and this feels, again, I don't know if it's the metal they make it out of, like, uh, I, I don't know, like, like, all right, so let me let me reason through this here. We're doing some physics, okay? <laughs> so so spring force is theoretically constant, right? I don't know. So I press and there's a constant force accelerating the mass of the spring back up. It's accelerating the mass of the slider and the spring back up into my finger. So the question, is the mass of the spring relevant? Is the mass of the spring big enough to matter? And if so, does a more massive spring, um, force equals mass times acceleration, right? So with a greater mass, you would have less, sorry, it's not constant acceleration, it's constant force. So with the, the same force and a greater mass, you would have less acceleration. Um, out of the bottom. And I don't know if the mass of a spring is significant enough to be part of that calculation. Because that's really what you feel, I mean, you feel the force, but it's because it's accelerating your finger. Um, so ridiculously nerdy, but that's what we're all here for. Literally post on a forum called Geek Hack. What do you want? So yes, I am talking about the physics of switch feel, of key feel. I'll put this in my I fucked up pile. Interesting. So you can see the lube is... Uh, get out of here, get out of here. The 104 uh, pools. I don't know if it's a viscosity thing. You can't, ah, get out of here. The 104, you can see like discrete blobs of lube in addition to the sort of coating of grease. The the higher viscosity uh, silicone oil didn't do that.
I guess it's better than Cheeto dust, right? Switch films in my shirt. I don't like anime. I'm not. I haven't fully degenerated yet. You guys haven't gotten to me yet that much. I do like anime actually. Like I've seen like an anime and I liked it. I liked Dragon Ball Z back in the day. Um, I liked like Attack on Titan, but I had too many plot twists. It got weird. Uh, people keep telling me to watch like Akira, uh, Full Metal Alchemist. I should watch them. I really like. I mean, I'm such like a normie when it comes to that stuff. Like I don't know the real stuff. I watched. I like Miyazaki movies. It's not even anime. He's just Japanese. And, uh, this also isn't really an anime. I guess it is because it's animated. I don't know what class. Does it just have to be Japanese and animated, or does it have to like fall into a certain style? Um, I watched a show on like Crunchyroll called uh, Shirakuma Cafe. Shirakuma evidently means polar bear, uh, and it was a cafe in the woods somewhere. It was like in a village. It was, this one feels scratchy. Why does this one feel scratchy? That, that bothers me. Come on, move, distribute. This feels fucking scratchy. Like, not even scratchy. Fucking scratchy. I don't know if there's a piece of dirt in there, but that does not feel good. I had the same problem with my inks. This feels bad. And I don't know if it's because I'm mixing up sliders and housings. That might be it, actually. You know? Maybe they're, they're, they're made... To, uh, but they should be cool. They probably have them in bins and they assemble them by machine anyway. Um, this is not... This is not up to par. Try to re maybe the film... Maybe the film was in the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. No. There's like... Is there a hair in there? Like it... I hope there's just like a hair in there or something. But I don't see it. I'm probably off camera. I'm just getting better lighting so I can. Look at this. Wow. I don't see any any scratches. I don't see any. Let me just try a different slider. It's weird. Cause I didn't notice like any significant scratch in any of these switches when I was before I was putting them together. You know, when I was using them on Lube. Uh, so I wonder, you know, that makes me think maybe I introduced some contamination into a few of them. Um, but it's also possible that, you know, with all the other vibrations going on, I just didn't notice. Or maybe the increased tolerances from having a film, if it was scratchy. This one, this one's beautifully smooth. Um, maybe it's, you know, with, with the tighter tolerances, I can try the slider in other housing. Maybe it's a bad slider. You know, maybe there's a little bit of flashing left on like on like the bottom of the post um it's hard to say give me one second i don't know that's weird i should have kept an eye i think it was one of these over here So I was just saying, oh yeah, so it was anime. I'm sure someone's there, like, oh, I've seen that. How are you watching that? Like, you don't understand the jokes. And so it was, it was a panda in a zoo, or like he, his mom wanted him to get a job. So he went to the zoo to get a job as a zoo panda to like look cute. Um, but he was like super, like, he was like both really lazy and really precocious. Um, he's wandering around in, in town. And he finds a cafe where all the it's like there's like it's one of those worlds where like there's people and animals just intermingling. Um, and uh, so, you know, so he's hanging out. He's a panda. He's a panda just hanging out in the world. And there's a penguin and there's a polar bear and uh, and it's like just they're just chilling in this cafe a lot of the time. 
Uh, there's like a plot and there's a story arc, but it's like a lot of very cultural. It's like very cultural. So like I had to, the person who recommended it to me, I had to like be like, hey, they made this like pun that like wasn't, and they like, they did a really good job of explaining the puns and the subtitles and stuff because it's, you know, I don't speak Japanese. thought maybe there wouldn't be good coverage i'll try to try to recover them um so like you know they try to explain the puns and the subtitles but there's some stuff that was just like super like you had to know the culture and so it was like weird to be watching it as an outsider but it was pretty funny overall there were just too many episodes and stuff but it was fun it was good fun the concept was funny there was a lot of like quotable moments um good characters it's probably famous I just like, yeah, it's some show, and it's like, that's the most famous show on TV in Japan. So, by the way, what happened there is I found, there was another one that was scratchy. And I really do want it, like, I, I mean, I don't see any dust. It's very, I just cleaned in here, it's very clean in uh, this part of the house. The office is a mess, but this part, the house is very clean, the apartment. And, uh... But maybe this, the film was in the way, I, I reseated it, it still did it, and so I just swapped out another slider and it seemed to work. So maybe my, you know, my issue with the inks would have been resolved if I just had the presence of mind to start swapping out sliders, although I thought I did. I thought I, I swapped out sliders to multiple different housings, but I think I kept taking the slider and putting it in different housings, thinking that the housing was bad, but it might be the slider that's bad, or that some sliders just want to be in certain housings. cooling off for the for the evening you know we switched from the latin party you know fun fun stuff and we got this like cool kind of bop going on right now rating oh my god i have 35 viewers oh my god hi top black i haven't i've just been talking <laughs> oh man um just ranting and raving this is i was talking about shirakuma cafe um Oh, yeah, all right, I get to show off uh, Weez is HHKB. It's my HHKB because I own it, but Weez, Weez modded it up. He did, the, he did the, the real hard work of making it sound beautiful, and I'm going to show it off because it is so nice. 59. Oh, they all left because I wasn't interacting with them. Oh, man. Uh, Shirokuma Cafe is a Japanese manga series. Oh, it was a manga. And then an anime adaptation by Studio Piro. All right, I'm just going to drop this link in chat. Uh, so you guys see what I'm talking about. What are the mods on it? On the, um, I, uh, he lubed it. I think he might have put some kind of silencing pads in there, actually. I'm not even sure. I, 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 I like, oh, and there's a Hasu, uh, Bluetooth controller in here. In fact, let me look up and see. Uh, I can look up and actually my chat with him and, uh, see what mods are in here. pleasant discord icon of his Topra, Topra, Topra. he didn't say Loop silenced. Yeah, so he put some kind of silencing silencing uh, things in here, which is what I thought. He has a typing test of it. Yeah, he there's some, there's silencing in here. This doesn't have that like clack, and so he lubed it with Trivis's 3204 and Silence X rings. And this thing is uh, the battery life has been good. Um, it, it lasts like definitely if you're using it like all day at work it'll it'll run down i don't I, it'll probably last like a full day at work but i haven't plugged this in in a while and uh it it's it's good to go you know i just turned it on and, and it worked um i can type for a second here all right all right, all right. i'll just show it off I'm not going to do type race or anything like that. Oh no, what happened? Just so you guys can all hear how it sounds. Right, better yet, let me um, 
have this like ridiculous setup. For, so for anyone tuning in, I uh, am doing this in my kitchen. I do have an office and a workspace. It is just a total disorganized disaster right now. So I just, my roommate's out. Um, I'm just gonna do it in the kitchen, you know? It's comfortable, it's airy, it's bright. I got a good breeze. I got this nice big table. And I got a, you know. And in case anyone's wondering why I'm typing like an absolute idiot, uh, it's because my um, my laptop is my webcam, <laughs> and it's angled down, so I'm like hunching over, <laughs> trying to like read the screen. Um, so yeah, that is somebody else's excellent, excellent Topra modding job that I benefited from. Isn't that cool? Uh, I've never modded a Topra keyboard. I have plans, big plans, to do some cool Topra, vintage Topra related stuff that is not going to happen anytime soon because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. And I'm going to have to like sit down and uh, figure out what the heck I'm doing before I do that because I don't want to make a fool of myself in front of KB Customs. Oh no, I lost my Twitch window. Thank you, Visioner. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I, this was, that was my first, outside of a meetup, that was the first time I typed on a social board. And it was, um, I, man, I, clearly a well-tuned Topra keyboard is really a sublime thing. Uh, so for anyone tuning in now, I really appreciate the raid, um, by the way. Um, I am building a JD45, not the blocked corner one, Building a JD45 uh, aluminum plate, aluminum case. I'll, I went through the details. I'll just, I'll probably at some point go back over it of the case. Um, I'm using Sakurios with a spring swapped with Cat Wee Wee 62 gram springs, which we learned are slightly heavier than the stock Zelio, uh, the stock Zeal PC Sakurio springs, even though they're both 62 grams. These are the V2 Cat Wee Wee springs. I'm using. Store Uni GPL 104 on the uh, sliders, which I, yes, I tub lube them because we're on stream and let's do a truncated, and I'm also sort of lazy. Mech Key Alpha 1000 CST, super unnamed generic oil that never seems to run out. Like this bottle literally looks as full as the day I bought it, even though I've lubed hundreds of switches with it. Um, and that is what's on the springs. And I'm also using cute pink films that more or less match the sliders. And I am going through all these boring tasks on the stream, bantering with public radio on in the background. And I really hope I'm not violating copyright by doing that. I'm just trying to support my local radio stations that have been around forever and treat me very well. And we were sort of discovering, well, you guys were ranting. I, I was ranting about the, the scratch, so you probably saw it. So some of them, I, I don't know if it's, I think I think it's the films. If anyone has experience with a with a switch, and I I, am, I swear these are these are clean. There is no maybe I mean maybe that paper towel introduced like micro dust, and I'm just totally grinding like microscopic dust into my switches, and they will be ruined in a year. But like this doesn't feel smooth at all. But some of them are just absolute buttery smooth. I don't know if it's the sliders. Some of the sliders are scratchy, and I didn't notice when they weren't lubed because everything else is scratchy. Not that they're scratchy. These are, you know, fairly stock, uh, smooth stock. Like that's buttery smooth. I hope I'm not going to have like a bunch of reject sliders at the end of this. No, I did not dome swap. These are these are um. These are stock domes, uh, stock 45 gram domes, which of all the, the domes that I've tried, again, these are the only ones that I own. I also have an Epson BFK, which also I believe has 45 gram domes, but they're like 20 years old, uh, so they don't feel good anymore. Some people really like those vintage domes. They feel like it's, it's not good. Like, you guys are whack, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's opinion, but I don't, I don't like it. Um, of all the domes I've tried, I like the 45 gram stock the best. 
Okay, you had some random rejects as well. Good. Okay, so it's not just me. Uh, I guess I'll. I have some extra. I have some housings that I like bent up the tops a little too much for me to be, feel comfortable using them. So these are these are good leftover sliders in case I, I run out of good sliders. Uh, one thing that I felt at the uh, the recent Newark, New Jersey meetup that I thought I've, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, I never got around to it. It's a hugely wise move. Someone took variable weight topra domes out of their wheel force and put them in a Niz TKL. It was so good. I loved it. I wanted to take that keyboard home and type on it all day. That was great. It's interesting. It's the first time I felt variable weight Topra, and I didn't really notice the variableness of it, which is interesting because it's supposed to be 35 gram ranging up to like 55 gram or something like that. I didn't notice at all. I don't know. Maybe they were sold variable and it's uniform 45. I don't know. I'm just dumb. But it was good. It felt really good. I like the. To I will say I like the Topra domes as much as I shill for Niz. Um, the Topra has that extra little bit of like, it's like a little extra bit of like heft to the dome, I would say. The Niz domes feel very like almost airy uh, and cloud-like. Whereas the Topra dome is like more of a, it's macho. It's like, yeah, I, it's a dome, but it's not a, oh God, but it's not a BKE dome where it's like, bang. Gotta smash through that dome. I didn't, I've only tried them at meetups, but I didn't like them at all when I tried them. I also used to not like Ergo Clears. I have a board with Ergo Clears. I still don't love them, honestly. I just built them because I had them. It's like an oddball kind of, kind of build. I don't know, the people with the jazz will think I'm ripping off Nathan Ken. I am not, I just like jazz. Much respect, much respect to the vibe he has on that stream though. It's cool, he's got this amazing voice. My voice is not silky like his. I'm using an inline mic. Oh, that's not true, I'm using the, the Zoom mic. But, um, I just like jazz. I like, I like, he actually has some really good playlists. I appreciate that there are uh, un, uncopyright encumbered playlists with actually nice music. It's not like Muzak or something. And, you know, you can listen to it and set up a nice vibe on your stream. Again, I'm really hoping that I'm not, you know, this, this VOD won't get muted and YouTube won't file a DMCA complaint and no one will ever get to see this because I tried to have a bunch of useful info. I tried to make this stream educational. The BK, BK lights aren't as harsh. About five out of 90. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. How about, yes, I have done the cop dome mod. In fact, I don't know if, uh, Let's see, is, is Top Clack still in here? Top Clack is gone. All right, so Quakums, Quakums or whoever was doing a build uh, is gone. But so Quakums actually sold me a keyboard uh, that was very interesting. And then I bricked the PCB. <laughs> Merlin, if he is still here, is shaking his head. Um, it's the first of many PCBs that I have bricked or nearly bricked. Um, that board was, it had me fiberglass top plate and then acrylic in the middle and I dome uh, a cop modded that and there's actually a typing test on my YouTube channel um, of me with my like iPhone <laughs> set up <laughs> you know in the corner and like just looking at my fingers smashing down on these keys um, look up this post link in chat. I wonder, I hope I actually uploaded the typing test though and it's not just languishing on my phone. Oh yeah, you know who did it? Mr. Keebs did it. Um, so I will link mine and I will also, oh this is from six days ago. All right, I, oh it's an hour long video. All right, I'll link that too because Mr. Keebs is cool. Um, but here's my video. It is it is very tactile. So I had Gateron yellows in there, and it was still like a heavy push. I would put like 
Yeah, yeah, light, light springs, I think, would be the way to go if you're really going to do a build with that. Um, I think that would be the way to go. Uh, but my question, you know, my concern is return force. Is there enough return force? Hopefully something like a Gateron clear, like a 30 gram sprit or whatever. Uh, oh, I hope I don't run out of pink films. I don't have more pink ones. I'll have to switch to the orange ones. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, like, try it, you know? Um, I love to see more weird stuff in the hobby, you know? I mean, weird stuff is weird because it's weird, right? Like, it's not objectively good or whatever. I'm going to run out of these films for sure. Um... But it's also like cool and different, you know. Um, that's why I don't own as as sexy as it would be. I don't own you know ten TKLs with three tool blacks with uh, three two or four in them because you know, sixty two grams, same sixty two gram strings that I bought a five hundred pack of. Like just because I I'm in it for variety, you know. I so I, yeah I have I have cop keyboard domes. In fact, I have two cop keyboards and their domes in a drawer taking up space. Um, I actually, I think there's somebody now made an aftermarket PCB. No, you know what they did is they, uh, someone made an aftermarket PCB that lets you use the caps, which are a weird layout. It's a 40%. It's like TGR, TG something, something, something. That's the name of the keyboard. It's based on the in equally indecisible name of the cop keyboard. But, uh, yeah, so I'll probably rebuild that one day. Maybe. I mean, probably. I'd like to. I have so many projects. And I'll use the domes. Maybe I'll put the domes back on it or... Put the domes on another keyboard. I don't know. It's it's like a gimmick, you know, because it's so harsh. It's like it's like the box navy of tactile. It's like box royals or something, you know. It's like really harsh. It's like fifty fifty five gram bottom out. Oh, what silent stems? What uh, what visionary? What switches are you actually putting them on? Yeah, so what, um, how was the, how was the top black stream? I actually meant to watch it. I kind of forgot and then just started doing this. <laughs> also, no idea how long I've been streaming for. I don't know if OBS tells you. Does OBS tell you? My, two hours. Oh my God, I've been streaming for almost three hours already. I talk a lot. All right, so here's the plan is I'm going to finish assembling these and then I'm going to call it because um, I don't want like a four hour marathon stream right now. And I eventually will want to vacate the kitchen and I want to leave time to clean up. That's, see that? Is that scratchy? Like, I think that's passable. I think the slider isn't very well oiled though. Get some, get some additional oil on that. Silent black stem, 30 gram spring, dunk. Yeah, man. Hey, that, um, that, that, uh, 30 grams. And it doesn't, it doesn't like that, that lightweight doesn't make it too harsh. You know, because I know like a lighter spring, the tactility can feel harsh uh, if it's too light. You know, someone out there on the internet was saying that what you can do with those domes is you can actually cut off the tube part on the top, take the spring out of the switch, and then make, there you go, oh, that's nice, that's, that's nice, and then make like, yeah, that's the guy, that's, there's no springs, it's just, a, it's like a thing. It must have been that. It must have been that that guy or gal, uh, doing doing that, telling me about that because that's that was what the most wild out there. I have to feel it. Yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna be a keycon man. I'm in New York. Uh, come for the halal cart, stay for the keyboards, or stay come for the keyboards, stay for the halal cart. You know, whatever, whatever is your suits your fancy.
All right, here's the big question is, uh, you know, maybe if I, once I run into these films, you know, I'll probably just call it once I run into these films, because, uh, I don't know, 23 viewers, are you guys having fun? Are you guys having fun watching? What time is it? All right, I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably go for another 10 minutes, and then I'll, I'll start cleaning up, because I want to get out of the kitchen. I don't want to leave a mess. Um, and uh, I don't want, like, my roommate and like my other friends to like come in and uh, be like, hey, what's up? And then you have to like, it's like awkward. Uh, they're out of the gig right now. I really wanted to go, but I just wasn't feeling so hot and I wanted to like get a build done. So here I am. I'll hang out with them tomorrow. They're cool, good people. This one different? Yeah, it's the same. I think the color's a little different on that one. Huh. You gotta hurry up with the assembly of the <laughs> Someone put a dome only switch in a key cult number one. That that I respect tremendously. That's not that's not a minivan, right? Like that's minivan you don't like it, it's 45 switches, you're done. That's a TKL. That's literally twice as many switches they did that mod for and soldered in, and if they didn't like it, they would have had to desolder as many. That's, 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 that's bold too, because that's an expensive keyboard, like, no, and you, you, you sell that, so you're going to have to desolder it, like, that's, <laughs> I love that, I hope, I hope I get to try both of those, I hope I get to try both of those. Uh, I only have three films left. Sad day. I hope I have more pink ones. It would be annoying to have non-matching ones. I could do. I have clear ones. I think, or like white ones, so that's fine. But then just the asymmetry of it would uh, get to me. I don't think I'll put the build on hold to wait for you know the pink ones to be in stock. All right. How about this? I promised some people I would show off some keyboards. So I will finish as many switches as I have. I will grab like one or two keyboards that I don't think have been very well documented on like the world of YouTube and stuff. Um, and then uh, then I'll call it a stream and start and start cleaning up after myself here. That's what I like to do. I like to I like to share what I have that is interesting or educational to other people. I'm not, I'm not like, sometimes you want to just see someone build a really high end keyboard. Uh, it's just, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be that guy because I don't have high end keyboards to build. I'm not a respected builder. Um, I brick PCBs, my stabs sometimes rattle uh, when I'm, you know, so I'm not gonna, I wouldn't pay, I wouldn't charge anybody to ever build a keyboard. Uh, if you want to send me a keyboard to build for free, I would actually probably have to charge you just because I, I have too many of my own builds <laughs> that I want to do. So it would be like opportunity cost. But um, I like to share what I have. I have like a, what I think of as a, as a weird oddball collection. And um, bring the ring. Okay, I'll bring, I'll bring that on the stream. I've shown that one a lot on the internet. There's like two typing tests of it. But, but yeah, I'll bring it on. I feel weird showing off the meme too because it's like, it's like, it was like, it was honestly, it was, oh, here's a film. All right, we got one more film. <laughs> the meme was like, you know, Krellbit's like personal project and it was a private group buy uh, that I just, I just happened to get, you know, a, uh, I was just in the right place at the right time and, and it was on Mac Market and I, you know, just, it just worked out um, that I ended up with one, but it's not like, I don't know, I feel, I feel like I don't want to, and I talk about oh, gas it's all on the meme. It's like this, the meme's like this. I just talk about it in the, in the context of gasket stuff because it's my main point of reference. Um, 
but it's like it's like it's really it's someone else's like pride and joy almost, even though I physically own the board. So it's like it's like bragging about this HHKB more than a certain amount. It's like it's not really mine to brag about. What's this picture? These are some nice keyboards. I don't know what this picture is for, but these are nice keyboards. Oh, those are yours. Oh, are you coming to KeyCon Vision here? Nice. Walnut. Wood. Tree material is good, man. That duck underglow. Cool. Not this year. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, moving. I moved last year. That sucked. All right. I'm really out of films, huh? All right. Enough switches for tonight. I've got probably maybe three quarters of the way through this. Here's my, like, garbage dump of uh, $1 switches. <laughs> Hold on. These were the scratchy ones. I'll keep those separate. These are the ones that are fine. I just maybe bent up the top housing a little bit. Um, I just have bowls everywhere. I'm going to live with that for right now because I want to get these keyboards out and not spend time cleaning up on stream, which nobody wants to watch. It's great to have a bag for leftovers. I'll probably put the stock springs in this bag. Put it there so I don't forget. Just take this whole tray and like move it. Ah, I'm going to put it on the floor. Seems like a bad idea. I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, I'll bring out some interesting keyboards. In a second. Okay, so I have three keyboards to look at that we're gonna check out here tonight. Uh, I don't have like a mat or anything. I should get one of those placemats. Let's get that just have some surface. These are over there, they're a little stained. I need to like bleach them, wash them, I don't know, something like that. So, placemats. So, first I'll just, there's HHKB. We've all seen it. It's it's a great board. I bragged about it, well, I didn't brag about it, I raved about it. Um, the other keyboards I want to show off are, uh, the first one is, uh, this was actually at the Newark meetup. This is a Katana 60 um, steel plate. This has Enjoy PBT Grayscale keycaps on it. This excellent underrated artisan by uh, someone on Etsy called Dave Space Laser. And the sculpt is Squatch. And I think the colorway is Killer Kelp, which he doesn't sell anymore. Um, it is, I love it. It's fun. And I think it, I think it fits like with this, it's this angry guy and then this uh, symbol for, I guess it, I, apparently that means sword. 
uh, in, in Japanese. I don't know if that's kanji or what. Um, but so yeah, I, this is this is stupid. You know, it's just like like a random forty uh, percent key to, to to get the profile right. And this one's actually a resin keycap made by uh, Pank Interactive. I guess his name's Alex. Um, those were sold on their website for a while. And so this is the Katana 60 in a Noxery T60 case. Very cool, very low profile. Um, has that sort of like Noxery angling to it, but has, and these, these like nice little, very classy chamfers. Uh, it almost looks filleted, but it's not. It's just a very, it's a like little, little classy accent. That, that's a really nice touch over like the Tofu, for example, which is just a sharp edge. Um, and it's, it's lower in front than the Tofu as well. In fact, you can compare it to the HHKB. It's, it's even slightly lower than the HHKB in front. You can't really see that. Um, so it's very, uh, it's very, and I know his thing is low profile keyboards. Uh, not low, you, you know what I mean. Low, low front height is always, he likes to talk about, uh, Zondat likes to talk about his low front height on his keyboards. I think it's a great feature. I don't know, do I even have a mini USB cable? I don't even, I don't even know where my USB cables are. I'm such a mess, but you know, here's what it sounds like. I'll try to get my microphone positioned a little better. Sorry if this makes a bunch of weird noise. So it's a stereo mic, so I want to get it in the middle. It's extremely quiet. This, this keyboard, I was shocked at how quiet it turned out. These are MX Silence in uh, Alias Housings, MX Silence Sliders, 3204, tub-lubed, punchy 58.5 gram springs. Yeah, I, this thing is really, really interesting. I wish I had a USB cable for a typing test. You can hear like, I did a good job in the stabs in this one. a little bit of pop more of a dull thud with the steel plate um, these switches sound so different because of the position of the case cool board yeah the muscle memory um, yeah this is this is the only board that throws off my muscle memory do ergodox no problem killed my thumbs but it's fine ortho i get used to it in like five seconds this with the muscle memory i'm getting more used to it but i really have to keep an eye on my left hand and consciously put my fingers in the right place because otherwise i just end up going this way and it gets messed up yeah the, the katana 60 only came with a steel plate um and that's actually why i went with a silent build i'm like well steel plate's so rigid i hate the sound of steel um, so let me just go silent. And this is my first full MX Silent build. Uh, I, I love this thing. This is great. It feels really, really, really interesting. Really interesting keyboard. And I just will show off because I talk about this. Um, enjoy PBT, homing keycaps. Don't work out. Big sad. So we're gonna have to live with just Bard from now on. I think Gok has, has even said that we're just, they're just not gonna do Scoop ones anymore, which is sad, because Scoop just pulled it. Um, bar only for now. But yeah, so that's the Katana. The next keyboard is uh, the ever underappreciated, and well, it's probably over, overpriced, but Duck. Duck's only tray mount keyboard, the Duck Sidewinder. And there's also the Duck Raven, which is uh, doesn't have the HTKB blocker. It's a looker, you know. It's uh, It, it kind of reminds me of that Fusion 60 keyboard that ran uh, maybe late last year on KBD fan. It's got, again, I don't, have, I don't know where the heck my USB cables are right now. It's probably, they're all tangled up in a box somewhere. Um, it's got two underglow of these. If anyone knows how to change the color of the underglow LEDs in O2D, let me know. I could not figure it out for the life of me. I let me know. <laughs> um, it's funny because like there's no attempt at diffusion at all. It's literally just two lights. This is like the most. It's not brutalist. It's like a very modernist. Ducks keyboards are modernist in aesthetic, and it is so interesting. Like it is, 
Like, you have to be bold to say, no, I am not going to diffuse my underglow LEDs. I'm going to just put two pinholes and have two really tiny surface mount LEDs in there. And you're just going to have, like, two, like, spotlights coming down out of the keyboard. And I, I, it's, it sucks that it's, it's not plugged in. This is such a dumb stream without it. But uh, it's, a, it's a cool-looking keyboard. I, I, it's, it's cool. The shelf, like, the shelf in the back, it's a neat-looking keyboard. That said, it's still a tray mount keyboard. Feels like a tray mount keyboard, sort of, with some caveats. Um, the screw mounting points are non-standard. Uh, instead of them being like here and here and then here and here, there's one in the middle and then two that are like more towards the middle, like somewhere in here. Maybe they're, yeah, they're like, instead of being out here, they're like in here. So there's one here and two here and then like one's down here like normal. And there's nothing down here at all by the space bar. So the space bar, I'll try to, I'll try to take out the bump-ons from, from the equation, but you probably can't see. There's quite a, actually quite a bit of plate flex. This is a polycarbonate plate. Uh, down at the bottom here, there's just no support standoffs at all. Um, so it's a nice soft bottom out. Sorry, that was super loud. Uh, it's a nice soft bottom out on the space bar. And the bottom row, it almost is like too soft with the polycarbonate. It almost feels like it's loose, like un, like um, like untethered in space, kind of. The tactility is just kind of all over the place in the bottom row. And then in the middle row, it's like it's like pretty nice. Top row, it's actually very nice. It's, it's stiff. It's pretty stiff, but with the with the actually very soft bump ons, the whole system has some give. And it's got that high pitched ergo clear. So I didn't lube the bumps on this guy but I did on these two switches. So you hear the difference with what regular ergo clears sound like. These are technically tactile grays. Hear that tray mount. It's like you're, you're smacking right into the metal. Um, and this is like a big hunk of metal too, right? This is like this, this really, a lot of Duck Sidewinder builds on YouTube sound very pingy and metallic. It's like this big, this big, um, it's, I don't know, it's like, it's like a, it's, it, you can tell that there's just a big butt worth of metal, like literally just like a, like a wedge of aluminum. Like it just, you can feel when you type on it versus a tofu. Uh, I, I mean, it's still rigid, but it doesn't, it doesn't, the sound is so different from a tofu. Um, now I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's better, but it's very different. Uh, it's, it feels, sounds like unusual. It's, it's an unusual sounding and feeling keyboard. Oh yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing. So here's you know, your unlooped MX, MX uh, clear. So these are, oh God, what are these? I bought these on Mech Market with another keyboard. These are tactile gray sliders in Gateron housings with uh, either 60 gram or 65 gram, probably 65 gram, maybe 60. I don't know. Ugh. Like, they make all these weird noises. I lubed the bumps on these two. Oh, and they have Elite Keyboards Mech Lube, which, like, nobody uses anymore. And it's this, it's this very, um, uh, like, where Crytox is almost, like, sticky and gluey and pasty. The, the Mech Lube is, like, uh, silky. It's, so I think I, I asked them what it was, or I asked somebody what it was. Maybe I emailed them or maybe I emailed somebody else. It's a silicone, or it says on their site, it's a silicone lube with PTFE in it, which is actually what super super lube is, but it's a completely different feel. Um, it's it's like a it's it's very silky and soft. It almost reminds me of um, crystal lube, but maybe less fluffy. And and it unfortunately, you know, the bump, the tactile bump is the tactile bump on an MX clear. Like, what do you want, right? But once you get below it, you can feel it's got this like silky. It doesn't do a good job at sound dampening, but it has this like silky softness to it that you don't get with Crytox. Crytox is more like buttery. Um, it's a really interesting lube. And so what I did on these two is I lubed the bump and I didn't on these. So you can you can hear and I can feel, you know, here's with that sort of like very sharp pointy bump relatively. And these are the lube ones. Here's the unlubed lube. Unlubed. All that like 
clicky leaf metallic leaf noise that um it all goes away and also it doesn't detract that much from the tactility it rounds it off it's a rounder smoother tactility this is everything i have ever wanted out of like a zelio um i think this feels actually better than the mod switches lube your bumps kids on those on these strongly tactile switches don't be afraid to lube the bump you know if you want that like really aggressive uh, cherry mx clear snap don't lube the bump but if you want more of a rounded feeling and you really don't like that the sound which i don't love <laughs> go for this the one other thing about this board is it has o-rings we o-ring modded this baby um there are 70 a shore a durometer whatever is seven the 70 with the a <laughs> those are the o-rings that are in here and i so without the o-rings it felt dead it was just it was like typing on it was too stiff and so when i talk about this keyboard oh i like my duck sidewinder i forget that the duck sidewinder i use is not everybody else's duck sidewinder same with the hhkb my hhkb was expertly modded uh my duck sidewinder has some unusual features one of which is o-rings well it's really the main unusual feature is the o-rings and it it totally changed the feel like i felt like i was typing on the glass table when i first built it and i was like oh this sucks and i was like wait I have the solution, O-rings, it softens up the bottom out, the, the tactility com comes forward a bit more. When you when you fall off the tactile bump and you hit the bottom of the keystroke or you're, you don't bottom out, because you really don't even need to, like, I don't need a bottom out. It's, these are 60 gram springs for sure. Uh, like, my, the weight of my finger just bottoms it out, but you don't need to. There's such a good tactile response, you don't need to. It, I don't know what is happening, but something's happening with the, with the o-rings and it makes the tactility feel better the trade-off is that it it leads to a little bit more metallic pinging from the case so like it was maybe a little quieter without the o-rings but i actually think i like i'm growing to like the sound and what it does to the modifier keys is just space bar whatever that stabilizers i think that's the switch I did a good job on the step. And by good job, I mean it's not rattling like crazy on me. Um, the modifier keys, listen to this. Oh, it's like, listen to this. Oh. You hear that metallic sound, but, oof, oof. I, I, could, I, I will sometimes walk by this keyboard, like sitting at my desk. I lube the bump with the same lube as everything else. Um, I just walk by this. I'm like, oh, oh. I just hit the modifier keys. I don't care about the rest of it. Like, this is whatever. This, this sounds gross. I, I need to lube the bumps. I need to desolder de the whole thing. It's an operation. But boy, oh boy. Oh, man. Man, that feels good. Hey, and I'll show off the... My art is in two because I'm here and showing off. This is a uh, some egg face that I got. I think I bought it. You know where I bought this from? I think I bought this from Death Caps on Mac Market. Cool, swirly. And uh, let's see what else. What else do I did I bring out? Um, oh yeah, I already have this keyboard out, so I'll talk about it. This is uh, a resin cast minivan made by Idea Twenty Three. I have a matching road kit. It's over in my room. My room. I'm not going to get it. It has. The Prince keycaps on it, which only have minivan compat, which actually really pissed me off, but they're Prince keycaps, so I got it. They're DCS. I like how DCS feels. I hate how DCS sounds. I think we can all agree on that. This is an oddball build. Plateless minivan, tray mount. Um, it has all the ridges in the case, so like the original minivan, it's a it's a consistent feel. It doesn't have that like the tray mount, tray mount problems where it's all uneven. Um, but these are unfilmed, lubed but unfilmed Mod M switches. And I went on a whole diatribe about how the film actually changes how the switch feels. And the only switch that I won't film is a Mod switch because it does bad things to the tactility. The shape of the tactile bump just changes. Um, and it's sad because, listen, I mean, listen to this. Ah, it just hurts. Like, ugh. I, like these sound okay because you can't really hear like 
I mean, some people like the sound. It just, to me, it's like, I mean, God, you know, compared to the HHKB, it's actually on, so I don't want to type into it. Like, like no way. You don't want to, you don't want like, yeah, I don't know. So, but it feels good. The bump is nice and round. Um, yeah, so, I mean, comparatively, Yeah, if you loop, yeah, yeah, here you go. If you loop the bump on an MX clear, the mod, the mod has a bit more of like a, like like coming over the hump. And the MX clear, I mean, this isn't a Gateron switch, Gateron housing too. So this is like its own thing. But this is like a really round. These switches are crying out to be in an aluminum plate, maybe with a gasket. I said I'll put them in a Polaris. So this is the weirdo minivan. Um, these aren't filmed again because I didn't like how it made the bump feel. It like took off, took off that like round, real roundness, but feels good. I need to put uh, the cone feet in the holes. I haven't done that. Um, cool, unusual keyboard. Again, I like to show off the unusual stuff. Um, and this wasn't expensive too, you know, like, all right, fine. It's not, you know, an aluminum custom, but it's cool and it's really light. And it's portable, and this I think is objectively the best. Not objectively, subjectively, but I care more about my opinion. I think this is the best forty percent layout, forty-five percent layout. Like just in terms of uh, comfort, I like these nice wide keys in the bottom. Um, if you're going to use a staggered forty-five that's not split, like this is the layout. I'm building a JD forty-five. I don't like the layout as much. Too many little keys. I like nice wide keys. I don't, have to, I don't want to think too many buttons everywhere. I mean, yeah, okay, They made he made a split minivan. Give me a split minivan with a tent kit. Um, oh, man, all right, whatever, but this is cool. This is this is up there in terms of keyboards that I'm like really happy with, that, I'm, that I own. Even if it sounds gross. Last but not least, before I wrap up, we got a big boy. It's old. It's brown. It's giant. It's a Jaconi. It's a Jaconi 5181. KB5181. It has MX Blues in it. I don't know when it's from. There's no date. I haven't opened it up yet. There's probably a date somewhere on the inside of it. But it's got ATXT switch, so I could theoretically rig up an adapter to this. I never have. It is a super like thick chunky very thick plastic high profile like look at how high these are oem profile keycaps and look at how high this comes up if these were cherry profile i'm pretty sure they're oem profile like these are really tall these are too tall to be cherry um like if this was cherry profile this this would these would be like level with the top this is a super I mean, it's so yellowed, it's brown. I don't know if it was in, in an office with a smoker or what. Um, but it's got, uh, it's, I mean, the switches actually look very clean considering, I don't think they're vent blues because I think the vintage blues have a pale blue slider and these have like your sort of standard blue blue slider. But, you know, it's a clicky keyboard. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is, right? Um, it has a plate. I assume it's stainless steel. Like all these, you know, sort of OEM keyboards of, of yesteryear. But it feels solid, man. This feels solid. I'm assuming these are OG Cherry stabilizers. They just need lube and they'll be good to go. It's got a big ass enter, which is cool. Uh, again, it can be converted because it's both AT and XT. Like, Man, these keycaps, you know, okay, maybe they're, I, don't, I can't tell if they're lasered or die subbed. I'm not good with these sorts of things. If somebody knows what the KB5181 Chacone, I think these are thin PBT. They don't look lazy, like they don't feel, there's no feeling of like infill. Um, they don't look pad printed. 
they might be like very high quality pad printing. I don't think they're die like I don't think they're die sub, but I really don't know. Um, I really don't know. Uh, oh, I just clicked my mouse, my uh, little trackball. Um, but yeah, so I mean, okay, it's blues. They're annoying with headphones on. It's fine, but. That would drive me up a wall after a day of typing, but I want to rebuild this fucker. I want to, you know, I want to, uh, I don't know if it needs, die. it has, I see the wire, the little jumper wire in there. I Hopefully I can actually put a diode in there instead and actually get more than two, I assume it's only two key rollover. I can hopefully get more than two key rollover out of it um, without having to, you know, totally hand wire it. But dude, this thing is solid. It's a sweet keyboard. I am one day, Many moons from now, I will desolder this thing. Um, I will reuse the MX housings. I will either jailhouse or throw out or sell the MX blue sliders for like a dollar. Somebody wants them, you can have them. Uh, and do something with the housings. Rebuild this up with some, 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 probably some maybe browns. Uh, I know you're like, why would you replace blues with browns? But you know my thoughts on that if you know me. And uh, this thing is this I this thing is so solid. It is so, this was such a good buy. Uh, like I, I'm like, I don't use full size keyboards. This is way too big for me. If I had a mouse, like I would have to have a mouse, like, you know, I'd have to put a mouse like up here and have like a whole thing or something like that. But uh, um, I guess the trackball, it's not so bad because I'm right like over here, and then I'm just like super Excel warrior. You know, I guess that's what it's for in the trackball. Like stick a <laughs> mod a little track point unit into here. That that that's true innovation. Someone needs to do that. Give me a full size keyboard, but put a track point module here. You know, like a scroll wheel. So I don't need to move my hand. The whole downside of a full size keyboard is uh, is alleviated and I can my nav cluster, I just move over here and there's a little there's a little roller ball, like on a like a Blackberry or something, or, or a track point or uh, I don't know, maybe that would suck, but someone do it. Someone get on it. So yeah, so this is the beast. Um that's kind of all I got. Uh, I was showing off some other tools I had. Um, I used, I actually got great use out of this magnetizer, demagnetizer tool that I think Matt of Interests turned me on to on one of uh, like a top clack stream, a build stream a long time ago. Um, oh, and one last thing is I'll show you the internals of the JD45 because I was talking about it earlier. If anyone's, uh, there's more people here now than there were when I was talking about it. So this, JD45 has an aluminum plate, just standard 1.5 millimeter. Um, I don't wanna turn this upside down because there's screws in the case, which I think was a bad decision in hindsight. Uh, this is apparently a very old Wilba PCB from 2015. Uh, very nice routing, very clean, uh, handsome. Um, Desoldered it, but it held up just fine. Uh, it's got these little cool breakaway sections for if you're one of the rare lucky few that has the blocked corner JD45, you get to do that. And uh, so it's full of screws, so it's a little scary, but you can see that there's these ribs running through the bottom of the case and lots and lots of screws. There's actually 12, I counted 12 mounting points. <clears throat> and so what this does is it gives you very consistent, even pressure across the whole PCB rather than hot spots. And so the, I, I don't know if the, I, this was the intentional thinking or it's just turned out this way, but it's almost like, look, if you can't, you don't want hotspots, hotspots are bad. So let's just make the whole thing a single rigid connected unit. Um, and it leads to a rigid typing feel, but it should be a much more consistent typing feel. And so with the silent switches, I'm actually very excited for this. It sort of takes off the edge from the rigidity and it should make for a nice build. And again, the, the one thing I don't like about this keyword really is there's nowhere to attach cone feet because it's a flat low pro thing. So I'll need to like double stick, double stick tape some cone feet on there or something. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably start, you know, I want to get cleaning up soon. Um, yeah. Any, uh, thanks. Thanks for watching. you got some guys, some of you guys have been watching me for, uh, almost three and a half hours now. I actually really, I, I to, to, I mean, to even have 15 streamer, uh, 15 viewers at, uh, midnight Eastern time, 
on a sat uh, uh, was it Friday night. Um, I got raided by Top Black. I, I know you guys are you guys are gone or asleep or whatever, but I really appreciate that. I like having fun on stream. I like showing off my stuff. That's why I have it. I'll be more comfortable selling it and downsizing it if uh, you know. I feel like people have gotten to and gotten to appreciate what I've gotten to appreciate. Um, so since the beginning, the beginning of time, three hours ago. Uh, yeah, all right. So if you guys are good. Uh, no questions, no keyboard requests. Um, I'm going to head out and start cleaning up this mess. And uh, I'll, uh, hopefully there will be more streams. I'll get a webcam. Um, I was recommended the Logitech C922. Hopefully I will have a webcam. And uh, everyone have a good rest of your night. Be well. Let's see if I can figure out how to stop streaming.